The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. Dramatized in six episodes by James Saunders. Episode one, The Man from Mern. Monsieur Atos. Ah, there you are. I'm on time, I think. Twelve o'clock midday, we agreed. Yes, yes. Where are your seconds? I'm afraid, sir, I've only just arrived in Paris. I don't know anyone here. I have two friends coming. Will that suit you? Perfectly. You've just arrived, you say? Yesterday, from my hometown of Tarbes. Yes, I can tell you're a Gascon from your accent. What's wrong with being a Gascon? Nothing, as far as I know. But I'm sorry to have to cut short your visit. Maybe you will and maybe you won't. For my part, I'm sorry to have to fight you when I believe you have a shoulder wound. Not made better by your careless barging into it. But don't worry, I'm ambidextrous. I'll fight with my left hand. You may even find it a disadvantage. Perhaps I should have warned you. Don't mention it. Where the devil are those friends of mine? Ah, there's one of them. Portos. Atos. He's one of your seconds? Something wrong? No, no. And there's the other. Aramis. Atos. You're late. Him too. Have you an objection? No, not at all. Portos. This is Monsieur... D'Artagnan. Monsieur D'Artagnan, with whom I have a quarrel. Impossible. That's the man I'm to fight. This idiot challenged me not half an hour ago. We're not to meet till one o'clock, sir. But he arranged to meet me, too. At two o'clock, Monsieur Aramis, not till two. You've just arrived in Paris and you've already picked three quarrels. Not on purpose. In fact, allow me to say how sorry I am. Uh... Uh, but I'm not backing out. I'm a Gascon. Gascons never back out. I only apologise because I may not be able to fulfil my debt of honour to you, Monsieur Portos. As for you, Monsieur Aramis, I'm afraid you don't stand a dog's chance of satisfaction. But let's not waste any more time. When you're ready, sir. At your service, sir. On guard. And this could easily have been the end of the story. A hot-blooded young Gascon comes to Paris to make his name and fortune, challenges three of the king's musketeers, gets killed by one of them, and that's that. But let's go back to the beginning. Ah... And now, some 19 years later, here he is in Tarbes, taking leave of his father. Here's a letter to Monsieur de Trophée, captain of the King's Musketeers. Now, he was a neighbour of mine, a Gascon like you. He too went to Paris with nothing but his honour. Now he's an important man with an income of 10,000 crowns. Give him this letter and do as he tells you. I give you this horse, my buttercup. <laughs> he's, he's old, but he served me well. Treat him as you would an old and trusted servant. Don't sell him. No, father. Remember, you're a Gascon and a D'Artagnan. Yes, father. Take no nonsense from anyone but the king and the cardinal. King and the cardinal. Fight at the smallest light, your honour. If you win, be generous. generous. If you lose, die bravely. bravely. Which, God forbid. Amen, father. Now go and say goodbye to your mother. Let her cry. She's a woman. Uh, 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 no tears from you. You're a man. Goodbye, father. <laughs> So off sets young D'Artagnan on his father's ancient yellow horse and arrives eventually in Paris, not without incident. You'll hear about that later. There he sells the horse for three crowns for its curiosity value, finds himself a cheap lodging, and the following morning makes his way on foot to the house of Monsieur de Treville, captain of the King's Musketeers and one of the most important men in France. The courtyard is crammed with musketeers. This is where they congregate when they've nothing better to do, which is most of the time. Young D'Artagnan threads his way through the mob, sword pressed to his leg to avoid trouble, heart thumping a bit, trying not to look like a yokel up from the country. On the steps, they're engaged in some kind of fencing game. They laugh when a scratch draws blood. But he's through with a sigh of relief into the antechamber, gives his name... Uh, D'Artagnan. ...and waits to present himself, listening to the conversation of a group of musketeers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a damn fine shoulder belt you're wearing, Portos. Who gave you that, I wonder? And for what service rendered? <laughs> Nobody gave it me. I bought it with my own money. Oh, yes. I bought this new purse with the money my mistress put into the old one. <laughs> you're calling me a liar? <laughs> Animis, tell them it's true. Hmm? Well, what does it matter? There are more important things in life than shoulder belts. <laughs> Not to Portos. See the way he shows it off. Now you're calling me a peacock. 
Are you calling me a peacock? Aramis, am I a peacock? I don't judge my fellow mortals. <laughs> what a mealy mouth you are. Why don't you become a priest and be done with it? You talk about it enough. I shall, you'll see. It's my true vocation. I'm only filling in time as a musketeer. He's protecting the king till the queen produces an heir, aren't you, Aramis? From what I hear of relations between them, he may have quite a weight. Maybe not. Oh. I hear the Duke of Buckingham somewhere. Oh, of course. <laughs> Aramis, that's in very bad taste. A joke about the king and the cardinal, as much as you like. The queen's sacred. I won't have a word said against her. Are you trying to teach me manners, Portos? What I can't stand about you, Aramis, is how you try to be both things at the same time. Priest and a man of the world. Decide what you are, for God's sake, and maybe you'll make a better job of it. Portos, you're one of my two closest friends, but you're a pompous ass. And I won't be lectured by a peacock with a belt like that on his shoulder. <clears throat> Take care, Aramis. And I know whose money paid for it. Your so-called Duchess. Oh. Aramis! Gentlemen, Monsieur de Treville awaits Monsieur d'Artagnan. And so young d'Artagnan makes his way into Monsieur de Treville's room, thinking, if those two are friends... So, my young fellow Gascon, what can I do for you? Only grant me a commission in the musketeer, sir. Only, my dear fellow, do you know what you're asking? My musketeers, I mean the king's musketeers, are the finest body of men in the country. We scour France for them. Stand straight. Sir. Hmm. <laughs> in any case, His Majesty insists that no one can join his musketeers until he's proved himself. How, sir? Two years in some lesser regiment. Two years? Unless you can distinguish yourself by some act of conspicuous gallantry. Oh, that will be quicker. Yes. One thing puzzles me. Yes, monsieur? I knew your father very well. If it was he who sent you to me, I'm surprised he didn't give you a letter of introduction. I'm sorry, monsieur. But I did have a letter of introduction. So where is it? It was stolen. Stolen? Yes, at Merm, on my way here. Some jackass was laughing at my horse. Your horse? It was an odd colour, but he had no right to laugh at it, so I challenged him. Whereupon he stole the letter? Yes, while I was unconscious. Ha! Ah, he knocked you unconscious? No, 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 no. The servants at the inn, they beat me and broke my sword. I had it mended as soon as I reached Paris, and I swear, if I ever see that fellow again... I don't understand. Why would he take your letter? You hadn't mentioned my name. As a matter of fact, in the heat of the moment, I did say I was an important business for Monsieur de Treville. Mon dieu. But then, while I was unconscious, the villain searched my pockets. The innkeeper told me. So I ran outside and challenged him again. With a broken sword? I'd forgotten about the sword. And they beat you unconscious again? No, no, no. The lady said he was not to waste his time on me, and he galloped off. But if I catch him again... What lady? There was a lady in the carriage. I see. Did you catch her name? He addressed her in the English way. Um, Milady. Milady. So, she's here. I don't understand, monsieur. Was he a tall, good-looking gentleman? Dark, sallow complexion, a scar on one cheek? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Like, a, like a bullet graze. Monsieur de Treville, if you know this scoundrel, I implore you. This lady was in a carriage. Yes, it drove up as I ran out to challenge him the second time. I think he'd been waiting for her. Did you hear what they said to each other? This is important. He gave her an envelope and, and told her she'd find her orders in it. That she wasn't to open it till she reached London. Then he galloped off and she drove off hell for leather in the opposite direction. For England. Damnation! What are they up to now? Monsieur de Treville, I implore you. Give me the name of this fellow and I'll ask nothing more of you. I'm mad to get my revenge. How old are you? Nineteen, sir. <laughs> Nineteen. Then take my advice, my hot-headed young friend. Keep out of that man's way. You don't know what you're dealing with. If you ever see him in the street, cross to the other side. Yes, Do you hear? Yes, sir. Now... The musketeers are out of the question, as I've explained, but I'd like to do something for you for your father's sake. I can write you a letter to the director of the Royal Academy. He'll help there you he to... Is. There he is! What? There, through the window, in the street! It's him! Scoundrel! You won't escape me this time! And out he runs, with not another thought but to catch the man who insulted his ancient horse. A horse well worth insulting, but that's beside the point to a brash young Gascon. Scoundrel! Out of the door he hurtles, knocking Atos aside. Ah, my arm! Sorry! I'll make you sorry, you country oaf! What did you call me? Down the steps past Portos. Look out! Get your sword out of my shoulder, Baron. Look what you've done to it, you fool. Fool yourself for wearing a stupid thing. You insult my shoulder belt? Into the street past Aramis, who has stopped for a moment to hold a scented and embroidered handkerchief to his nose. Ah! 
My handkerchief. He runs with not another thought but to catch the man who insulted his ancient horse. A horse well worth insulting, but that's beside the point to a brash young Gascon. Scoundrel! Out of the door he hurtles, knocking Atos aside. Ah, my arm! Sorry. I'll make you sorry, you country oaf. What did you call me? Down the steps past Portos. Look out! Get your sword out of my shoulder, Baron. Look what you've done to it, you fool. Fool yourself for wearing a stupid thing. You insult my shoulder belt! Into the street past Aramis, who has stopped for a moment to hold a scented and embroidered handkerchief to his nose. Ah, my handkerchief. You've knocked it to the ground. Damn it, now you've trodden on it! Sorry, sorry. Here, there's not much mud on it. What a fuss you people make of your belongings. As for it being yours, I advise you to change your perfumia. How? Dare you! And so, while finding no trace of his scar-faced enemy, he manages to make three more. So here we are again, midday on a patch of ground outside the Carmelite convent, as he tries to get the measure of his first opponent. Atos, the eldest of the three, fights deliberately, left-handed, weakened by the wound in his right shoulder, given him in a brawl with the Cardinal's guards the day before. He'd rather not be fighting, but honour is honour. D'Artagnan, too, wishes things had turned out differently. He's only ever fenced with his father. Oh, you there, you musketeer! What damnation is the cardinal's card? She just wants to be done for. Very well. Dueling, I see. You know there's a law against dueling. <sighs> Jusak, you again. Atos, you should be home nursing that wound I gave you yesterday, not playing with swords again. <laughs> you can see you're outnumbered, so put your swords up, there's good fellows, and come along with us. Get about your business, Dusak, and leave us to ours, or it'll be the worst for you. Now, now, Portos, remember, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Monsieur Jusak, you know we respect you, the Cardinal's paid guard, and we'd dearly love to accompany you to the ends of the earth and over the edge, if it was still possible. Unfortunately, we have to take our orders from Monsieur de Treville, and he wouldn't like us to do that. So I'm afraid, with respect, you will have to do something else with your kind offer. As you like. We'll take you along by force. Is that what you want? One moment. Listen, there are five of them and three of us, and with my wound I'm not on top form. So they'll certainly beat us again, as they did yesterday. No, 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 no. There's no retreating for me this time. I can't face the captain after another thrashing. I don't suppose you can either. So we shall have to die here. What else can we do? Nothing. I was just stating the fact. Good. Then so be it. Let's get on with it. Excuse me, gentlemen. I think your arithmetic is at fault. There are four of us, not three. This is a musketeer's affair, D'Artagnan. Stay out of it. You, that young fellow, you can go. Take yourself off and think yourself lucky. There you are. Go away and challenge someone if you want to die. You couldn't laugh at it. You only get in the way here. Leave this to the grown-ups. I shall do as I see fit. You insist on staying? Absolutely. To the end. He'll only get under our feet. Stop it, Portus. He's a brave man. Four of us, then. Shake my hand. Uh, not that one. Sorry. So, are we ready? Ready. Then, have at you! It really is too bad, Trevi. I'm justifiably angry. Royally angry. With what, sir? With you, Trevi. You and your damned musketeers. Why? What have they done? Don't pretend you don't know. The Cardinal has given me the full story. He's furious, and so am I. I've been put in the wrong, and I hate that. Why can't you keep your hooligans in order? Take off my boots. Sire, is it, or is it not true that I'm not content with brawling with the Cardinal's guards two days ago, and <sighs> losing, and losing... They were outnumbered. You're not content with that. Yesterday they picked on some guards going about their legitimate business, vastly outnumbered them, and set on them in a most cowardly way, killing one, wounding three, and dumping the poor fellows on the steps of the Carmelite convent. The nuns were very upset. True or not? Quite untrue, Your Majesty. Oh, so you're calling the Cardinal a liar? Mistaken. After all, the Cardinal's guards would not have wanted the shoddy business to come into the open. All right. Give me your version of it. I'll get to the bottom of it. I'm not called Louis the Just for nothing. I examine my men closely, sire. This is what happened. Three musketeers... Three? Three of your most loyal musketeers, Atos Portos and Aramis, you know all three, were amusing themselves, giving fencing lessons to a young lad they picked up. Mm, uh, I heard nothing about a young lad. A 19-year-old lad, just up from the country. I believe they'd also planned a picnic. 
when they were set upon by five of his eminence's guards. Five? Including that troublemaker, Jussac, who had already wounded Athos in the brawl he started the other day. Three musketeers, one wounded, and a boy. They'd have been justified in running away, but they decided to die defending your majesty's honour. And they thrashed them instead. As you've heard, that part of the cardinal's story is true. The boy too? I should like to commend the lad to you. His name is D'Artagnan. The guards called on him to leave before they attacked. Ah, so they attacked. But he insisted on staying. He fought bravely with the rest, save Athos when his wound brought him to his knees and ran Jussac through. He... he ran Jussac through? They came back in triumph, arm in arm, and celebrated uh, with a few drinks. If they caused a little hubbub, I apologise on their behalf. Well, of course they did. This is a victory. You must bring this lad to me. I should like to reward him. Bring them all to me tomorrow at noon, here at the Louvre, say. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm hunting. Uh, tomorrow evening. They will be honoured. Oh, but you know, Treville, it's a bad business, having two rival parties in the country. Two heads of state, that's what it comes to. And what can I do? Richelieu's clever. I need him. France needs him. We're beset with enemies within and without. You know the damned Duke of Buckingham plans to land an expedition at La Rochelle to help the Protestants? How do I know? Richelieu's spies, of course. And he'll take care of it. He's a clever man. And I'm sure he's loyal to me. Though not, perhaps, to the Queen. What's the Queen to do with it? Damn the Queen! I don't want to talk about the Queen! No, sire. Tomorrow evening, then. Oh, not by the front. Bring them up the back staircase. There's no need for the Cardinal to know. So the following evening sees the young Gascon with his three companions, for they are by now inseparable, waiting the summons to audience with His Majesty King Louis the Thirteenth. For the musketeers, this is nothing new. But D'Artagnan is in a seventh heaven. His Gascon imagination has leapt ahead. He is rich, famous, and the darling of Paris. Well, come in, you scoundrels. Your, Your Majesty. Majesty. Your Majesty. Uh, shut the door, Lachenay. Sire. Now, I have a bone to pick with you people. You can't go about crippling and killing the Cardinal's guards like this, you know. At this rate, there'll be none of them left. And then where shall we be? One at a time. Now and then. Moderation, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> oh, as for you, young fellow, where is he? Come out from behind them. I'm not going to eat you. As Your Majesty wishes. I can eat you if I like. <laughs> well, you look tender enough, but I'm told Gascony meets the toughest in France. I don't want to break a tooth on you. D'Artagnan, isn't it? Yes, Your Majesty. His father was a neighbour of mine who fought with the rest of Gascony for your father's claim to the throne. Oh, so I'm to thank him for making me king, am I? <laughs> Lachenay, see if I've got forty pistoles somewhere in my pockets. And uh, Treville, find a place for this young blade in the regiment of your brother-in-law, Des Essars. Yes, Your Majesty. It's not the musketeers, but it'll do for a start. And keep him out of mischief. Thank you, Your Majesty. Long live, Your Majesty. I hope I can rely on you fellows to help me do that. We've died a thousand, thousand deaths, deaths for Your, your Majesty. Majesty. Only if you must. I prefer you alive. Uh, there's your forty pistoles. And now you must go. The Cardinal is coming to see me, and I'm anxious to ask after the health of that poor guardsman of his, Jussac. Hey, Treville. <laughs> after bowing out from the King, our young friend generously divides up the money, which comes conveniently to ten pistoles each. Then the others advise him on what to do with more money than he's ever had in his life. A slap-up meal at the Pomme de Pain Tavern for a start. Then you must get yourself a servant. You can't dress well without a servant. There's a fellow I've noticed standing on La Tournelle Bridge. Every morning is there, spitting into the water. Obviously a man of regular habits and a serious mind. I'll get him for you. <laughs> Thank you, Porthos. And of course you'll need a mistress. Or so I'm told. My eyes are future abbey. I know little of such matters. My wants are of a more spiritual nature. <laughs> <laughs> what are you sniggering? Aramis, have you forgotten why you challenged me to a duel? Did you knock my Bible out of my hand as I was reading it? Your Bible? It was a handkerchief. Keep your voice down. An embroidered handkerchief with a monogram in the really? corner and scented like the devil. I smelt it as I picked it up. Daniel, if you mention that handkerchief again, I shall challenge you again. Then I shan't. For <laughs> my word, the scent. What are you two whispering about? <laughs> this is a celebration. Come, let's have a song. Oh, all right. I began to dance between two gentlemen, my darling. I began to dance between two gentlemen. He who loves me truly, clasp me by the hand, my darling. He who loves me truly, clasp me by the hand. And so they celebrate the golden time they live in, as it seems to them, and drink and eat and swagger and throw money about, and so we lead them for a week or two. Planchet, who got himself a job, 
by spitting off a bridge, engaged himself gladly as D'Artagnan's servant, hearing the gold jingle in his pocket. However, he was less impressed as that money dried up, and finally, prompted by his grumbling belly, he proved mutinous, till D'Artagnan, on the advice of Porthos, thrashed him and gave him a lecture. There! Now listen to me, Planchet. Yeah. Times are bad at the moment, I agree. I'm as hungry as you are. But things will change. Stay with me and you'll prosper, I give you my word. Is that fair? If you don't answer, I shall have to beat you again. Yes, it's fair. Sir. Sir. Then we'll say no more about it. Oh, enough practice. I'm weak for lack of food. I've never known such bad times. Aramis, you're the holy one. Can't you pray for something? Pray for money. Something will turn up. It always does. Before or after we starve to death. Portas, can't you get something out of your duchess? You've done it often enough. Mind your own business about my duchess. Anyway, that well has dried up for the present. What about you? Can't you sell some more books? Last time you helped us out, you said you'd sold some books of theology. Though it must have been an odd bookseller. You came back stinking of scent. <laughs> the market's depressed hmm. for theology just now. What about you, Adolf? Money is the paint and powder the whore life plasters her face oh, with. Oh, very helpful. It's no good asking you, D'Artagnan. There are no gold mines in Gascony, as everyone knows. I've got something to say. Say away. Talk costs nothing. Here we are. Four men of the highest calibre, proven in combat, ready to, to, to run any risk, face any danger. Even a halfway full belly. And what do we do? We practice swordplay, get up to silly practical jokes and loaf about casual meals. Loaf we were made for better things than this. We should be engaging in some worthy cause. With money in it. Exactly. Find one, then. All right, I shall. You'll see. Oh, I'm going home to see if my man Muscaton has scraped up a crust from somewhere. If not, I'll thrash him, if I've got the energy. And I've got a theological treatise to finish. I'm going home to bed. I can dream about food. D'Artagnan's room, four in the afternoon. True to his word, D'Artagnan is dreaming of venison. Planchet, curled up by the door, dreams of an avalanche of puddings. Until suddenly... Sir, sir. Planchet, I was in the middle of a meal. You're lucky, sir. I'd only just started mine. There's somebody to see you. Hmm? Monsieur D'Artagnan? Yes. What can I do for you? In private, please. Planchet, out. Out, yes. Sir. Sir. Monsieur D'Artagnan, I've heard about you. Have you now? Oh, yes, I keep my ear to the ground. A young man of great courage, that's what I hear. Really? Don't sit down. Thank you. This is why I've come to you, on account of my wife. Your wife? She's a good, bright girl, made to the Queen's wardrobe. Good-looking, too. That's not why I married her, of course. In fact, I thought twice the diary was chicken feet. But Monsieur Laporte, the Queen's gentleman-in-waiting, is her guardian and wanted her settled, so I took her on. So? She's been kidnapped, sir. Kidnapped? When? Who by? When? Yesterday morning, as she was leaving the Louvre. She comes every Thursday to see me. She's a good girl. Who by? I can't swear to it, but I think I know. I've seen him pestering her for some time. Pretty, you say? Yes, so they tell me. You're wrong. It's not a love affair. Or not hers. Who's then? Political. A royal. Political? If I say a duke... Buckingham! Look, I must be mad. You could have me up. I'm a gentleman. You can trust me. Besides, you've said too much already. You may as well go on. How do you know about this? From her? Who else? Oh, look, I'm scared. See, I'll shut the window. Then you'll be safe. All right. Monsieur de Laporte is the Queen's private agent. He put my wife close to her so that he got someone to trust. She's got enemies all round. The King suspects her. The Cardinal hates her. Why? It's common knowledge. He once tried to have her. She wouldn't have him, so now he plots against her, tries to put her in the wrong with the king. Revenge! Listen, this is what they've done. They've sent a letter to the Duke of Buckingham in the Queen's name. What? To get him to come to Paris. Then they'll have him, you see. Who will? I, I don't know his name, but I know what he looks like. Well? Tall, distinguished-looking, dark hair, skin the colour of tripe. And a scar on his cheek. My man from Meung. What? Where does he live? No idea. Uh, uh, wait, listen. There, there's something else. Read this. It came this morning. Your wife will be returned when we've done with her. Try to find her and you'll find the Bastille. I don't want to end in the Bastille, monsieur. Don't worry. You don't have to do a thing. I'll find your wife. I knew I could trust you. Even without mentioning the rent. The rent? Bonacieux, uh, at your service. My landlord. Uh, right. Ah, oh, Bonacieux. You've never seen me because you've never paid your rent. Three months? Yes, I... I... Forget it. Do this for me. Forget about the rent. Uh, uh, here's 
50 pistoles for you. 50 p- Will that do? It'll do. For the moment. Good. I rely on you, then. I'd better go. Uh, good. Oh, good God! What is it? He's there! He's down there! In that alleyway! Look! In the cloak! God Almighty! He's looking this way! It's the man from Mung. Out of my way! Out of my way, Plochet. Yes, sir. So... Stop! Stop! Damnation. And so, you didn't catch him. Vanished like a ghost. Mm. All we have to do is find the lady. Lady? Put ourselves out for a draper's wife. Women are trouble created for men's downfall. Speak for yourself, Atos. There could be more pistols where this came from. Besides, it's our duty to help the Queen. There's a cardinal's plot here. As loyal subjects of the king, he's our only enemy. He and my evil genius, the man from Meung. All right, so what do we do? What's that commotion downstairs? Who's there? Save me! Save me! Four of them downstairs! They've come for me! Bonisier, what the devil's the matter? No, 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 put your swords away. That's not the way to play it. But we can't allow them to... Be quiet, Portus. You're a good chap, but you can't think. What? D'Artagnan knows what he's doing. Come in, officer. What can I do for you? Excuse me, gentlemen, but we have orders to arrest this man. Quite right. I can see he's a scoundrel. Do your duty. But uh, you promised to help me. Be quiet or you'll ruin everything. Go with them. I have a plan. But... Uh, Do as I say or all is lost. Uh... Do you know this rascal came up to borrow money? Take him away. Teach him some manners. Thank you, monsieur. Come along, you. Uh... I... God, I could have dealt with all four of them with no help from any of them. And they'd have sent a dozen more and arrested us. And what good would that have done? Well, personally, I am disgusted. You take his money, you promise to help him, you throw him into the arms of the police. Is that the action of a gentleman? Forget your finer feelings, Portus. We're setting ourselves against the cardinal. We can't pick and choose our methods. If we're not cleverer than he is, we're doomed. The lady you mentioned, D'Artagnan, the one you saw with your man from Meung. Wasn't she going to England? To deliver the forged letter to Buckingham, of course. To ruin the Queen. Gentlemen, we are about to lock ourselves in mortal combat with the most dangerous man in France as champions of our beloved Queen. Are we together on this? Together. Together. Yes. Yes. Till death, if necessary. All for one and one for all. All All for for one and one one for all. Swear. Hand on hand. All All for for one and and one one for all. Then nothing can stop us. Together, we are invincible. Planchet, where the devil's the wine? In episode one of The Three Musketeers, Jamie Glover played D'Artagnan, Anton Lesser Aramis, Timothy Spall Portos, and Robert Glenister Atos. The King, Nicholas Bolton, the Trevis, Malcolm Ward, Planchet, Dominic Letts, Bonacieux, Norman Bird, D'Artagnan's father, James Taylor, Jussac, David Jarvis, and a musketeer, Michael Onslow. The narrator was John Rowe. The Three Musketeers was dramatized by James Saunders and directed by Martin Jenkins. Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. Dramatized in six episodes by James Saunders. Episode 2 A Matter of Life and Death. Cardinal Richelieu has sent the Duke of Buckingham a letter forged in the Queen's name, luring him to France and thereby hoping to catch him during an illicit meeting with her. The Musketeers, Athos, Portos, Aramis, and the young Gascon d'Artagnan are determined to save the honour of the Queen. D'Artagnan, wasn't your servant bringing some wine? I can't think without drinking. Planchet, sir, where the devil's that wine? I can't get it, can I? Not with your landlord gone and four policemen down there. I can see them through the window. I'm not messing with them. What are they doing? I don't know, but they've got the boots off, so they're staying. Uh-huh. The mousetrap. The 
What? It's a police trick, Portos. They sit there quietly and wait for callers. Ah. If somebody knocks, the door opens and... Snap. Why don't we go down there and beat them up? What good would that do? Do me a bit of good. If only we could eavesdrop on them. Aramis, you've given me an idea. This room is directly above Bonacier's, and that looks like a loose flagstone. Uh, try it, Portos. If you can't move it, nobody can. <clears throat> Wait a minute. <laughs> It's coming. Here, let me help you. A bit more. Yeah. I've got it. Splendid. And look, there's a knot hole in the board there. Pull shape. Put your ear to it. See if you can hear anything. They're talking. Yes. What are they saying? <laughs> They're telling jokes. Good. You can amuse yourself. If anyone arrives, let me know. Only keep your voice down. If we can hear them, they can hear us. Meanwhile, gentlemen, you know most of Paris between you. I suggest you snoop about the town and see what you can find out. Since there's no wine, you may as well. Come, gentlemen. Let's see how well we fare as spies. Spies? I wonder why they kidnapped the Queen's maid. It must be the Cardinal's doing. But in that case, why arrest her husband? <laughs> Not so loud, Ploche. <laughs> Hang on. Someone's come in. Who are you? It's a woman. Move over, let me hear. Take your hands off me. Uh, Don't touch me. I am mistress of this house. What's happening? I work in the Queen's household. We're well aware of that, Madame Bonacheur. Oh, dear. It's her. Ploche. Yes, Where's my sword? Yes, sir. Downstairs. my friends. Tell them to come at once, armed. Hurry! I'm off. This is their door. <gasps> Take your hands off the lady or it'll be the worse for you. Get out. This is your police, Pacha. We'll see about that. Huh? Oh, my God. Safe in the Bastille. The Bastille? But he knows nothing. He knows you were kidnapped. Who told you about that? Your husband. He asked me to help find you. He had a letter. From whom? I guess from a tall, dark devil with a scar on his cheek. Uh, yes. Yes, he was the one skin the colour of tripe. Who is he? Do you know him? The Cardinal's man. Our paths have crossed before. How did you escape? Oh, I pretended to be ill. They went off for something and I knotted some bedclothes together and slipped out. You were as clever as you are beautiful. But now you must leave here. They'll be back with reinforcements any time. Where shall I take you? I, I don't know. I, I, I daren't go to the Louvre. They'll be watching for me. I meant to send my husband. They know him there. They, there's nobody else I can trust. Only myself. How do I know I can trust you? Look into my eyes. Yes. Perhaps you're young enough to be honest. Well, I shall have to trust you. What else can I do? Come then. You can stay at the lodgings of my friend Atos. Oh, with a stranger, monsieur? Don't worry, he won't be there. But if... if he does come back, I'll leave word that there's a lady in his room. That'll drive him away again if I know Atos. But my honour, I shall be compromised. We have other things to think about than that. This way. Good. Now make yourself at home. You'll find some good wine. He always has a bottle or two about. Now, what else can I do for you? I, I can trust you. Madame Bonacieux, with your life, I'll die for you. Well, I'm in your hands. Go to the Louvre. To the Rue de la Chalentrance. Ask for Germain. 
Have you got that? Yes, yes. Rue de la Charles Germain. Say to him, Tour and Proussel. Then he'll know you're one of us. Tell him to fetch Monsieur de la Porte, the Queen's gentleman in waiting. Your guardian. How do you know that? Your husband told me. He arranged your marriage. Oh. Yes, so he did to my poor, innocent husband. Madame, I... Oh, enough of that. When Monsieur de la Porte comes, send him here. Good. Lock this door when I've gone. Open only to this knock. To no one else. No one. Yes. Yes, go now. One more thing. When shall I see you again? Do you want to? I want nothing else. Promise I shall see you again. Very well. I promise. <laughs> well, only on one condition. Anything. You must wait for me to contact you. You are not to follow me. Now go. Go. Remember. Did her eyes soften somewhat as he left her? Well, maybe we see only into the mind of the young Gascon. Adventure beckons. The lady is very pretty. Her husband is a fool with money. With any luck, some will come his way. Which is the more important? The love growing in his heart or the money jingling in his head? Who are we to guess? Planchet! What? Sir? Sir? Has anything happened since I was gone? Have my friends come? Only Monsieur Atos, sir. I couldn't find the other two, so I've left messages. So where is Atos? Arrested. Arrested? Uh, the four men came back with reinforcements. They took him for you. Did he tell them who he was? He whispered something to me before they took him, sir. He said, you know more about the affair than he does, so you're the one who must be free. Uh, oh, and he'll pretend to be you for three days. Well done, mm. Atos. Three days. Yes. It'll give me time to act. Where did they take him, the Bastille? No, they didn't say. They just ransacked the whole place, took away any papers they could find, and left. Listen, Planchet, mm -hmm. the musketeers are doing guard duty at the Louvre. Mm -hmm. Monsieur de Treville will be with them. I must tell him what's going on. If Porthos and Aramis arrive, I'll meet them at the Pomme de Pin Tavern. Mm -hmm. Not here. The house is probably being watched. You stay here. Are you afraid? Sir, you may be a Gascon, but I am a Picard. Don't worry about me. Good man. And D'Artagnan hurries out and makes his way again towards the Louvre. It's dark as he nears the Pont Neuf. But the sight of two figures walking ahead of him, caught for a moment in the light of a window, brings him up short. She is hooded and cloaked. He, in musketeer's uniform, keeps a handkerchief in front of his face. Surely that's... No, it can't be. But... Well, it is, I'm sure of it. It's her. It's her. And who the devil... It looks like they're crossing the bridge. I'll follow. Wait. I remember now. Passing Aramis's house, it was dark, but I caught a glimpse of a figure, a woman's figure, cloaked like that, knocking on a door. The window opened a crack, an exchange of handkerchiefs, and she was let in. I remember thinking, what a sly dog. Aramis, it's Aramis. They're both betraying me. Hold there, if you please. What do you want? Why do you bar our way? You're not Aramis. You took me for someone else, I understand. Now, please let us part. One moment. I don't know you, my English friend, but I know this lady. And I should like a word with her. You promised. You promised not to follow. As you see, she has no wish to speak to you. Now, please let us pass. Do you push me, monsieur? I'll push you to get out of the way. Now, please go before it gets worse for you. We'll see about that. Come, then. Make it worse for me. No! This is madness! Your Grace, I implore you. Your Grace... You'll ruin everything. It's the Duke of Buckingham. Your Grace. Madame Bonacieux, forgive me. I'm a fool. Let us say rash, my young friend. You are in love, am I right? Yes. So you do foolish things. Well, my God, I understand that. Here's my hand. Thank you. How can I serve your Grace? You wish to serve me? Very well. We are going to the Louvre. Follow ten yards behind. If you see somebody suspicious, kill him. Kill Come, him. my dear. Luckily, our lovesick Gascon has no occasion to kill anyone, so we leave him to join his friends for supper as the Englishman and the Queen's maid steal into the Louvre. If they're challenged, she will say she was smuggling in a musketeer lover. Her reputation will be ruined. But who cares about the reputation of a draper's wife? This way. Nobody uses these stairs. In here. Wait there. Someone will come. While he waits, you will want to know a little about the Duke of Buckingham. See him as he turns to the mirror to examine himself. Hmm. 
proud, confident, handsome, 36 years old, a consummate courtier, a man who can start and stop a war on a whim, a man admired by all, except perhaps widows and orphans. As soon as he entered France, he realised that the message summoning him to the Queen was a forgery. Most men would have fled straight back to London, but not the Duke of Buckingham. A concealed door opens, and he sees in the mirror... Your Majesty. He falls to his knees, as who would not, kisses the hem of her gown, as who would not. Anne, Queen of France, 26, her beauty celebrated in many a sonnet. My Lord Duke, you know you should not be here. It was not I sent for you. The summon was not by my hand. Your Majesty, tell me you regret my coming and I shall leave at once. I regret that you put yourself in danger. They know you are in Paris. It's madness. My love is madness. I love you. What can I do? Oh, you must not say that. Not speak the truth. You want me to lie or you want me not to love you? I... You're confusing me. My Lord Duke, please understand, I only agreed to see you because you insisted on putting your life and my reputation in peril by staying in Paris. France and England are at war in all but name. We have allegiances, we have vows we've made to others. To go against this is sacrilege. We must never meet again. I beg you, go now. To break our love would be greater sacrilege. I never said I loved you. Have you forgotten the last time we met in the gardens at Amiens? I remember. I remember the softness of your hand on mine. The look in your eyes as you spoke of your unhappiness in a country not yours. With a husband you felt was also not yours. I know what your eyes said then. Do you deny it? I forgot my position. It was inexcusable. You know the Cardinal Lant of our meeting told the king. He was suspicious already. This is why he refused to accept you as ambassador to France when you were appointed. You see, there is nothing but trouble. France will pay the penalty for that. Why do you think I've planned an expedition to help the Protestants at La Rochelle against France? Yes, I shall start a war for you, so that afterwards, when we've won, they'll be forced to accept me in Paris, and then I shall see you. You'd kill thousands? To see you, yes. Very well. I leave it to you. Tell me you don't love me, and you'll not hear from me again. So be it. <sighs> For heaven's sake, please go now. I had a dream. Of me? I saw you lying in a pool of blood. <gasps> I, too, had that dream. You, too, loved me then. I don't know. I can't think. Come back when it's safe to come back then, I'll tell you. Oh, those words fill me with joy. Now I can leave. Only give me something, some, some token, a ring, a bracelet, something. Then you'll leave the country at once, you swear? I swear. Anne of Austria gives the Duke a little rosewood box, her initials on it in gold, sways slightly as if to faint as he, kneeling, kisses her hand. I shall see you again. If I have to set the world on fire for it. Supported by her lady-in-waiting, Doña Estefania, she leaves, and the Duke of Buckingham is led quietly outside by the faithful Madame Bonacieux, the draper's wife. And now, let us visit the draper. Well, Bonacieux, you're really in trouble now. Sir, I've told everybody. I don't know anything about anything. I don't know what I'm doing here. Lying will get you nowhere. People can be left to rot in the Bastille, you know. I know. Or disappear like puffs of smoke, you follow me? I want to help. Ask me anything, anything. I've nothing to hide. What arrangements did you make with Monsieur D'Artagnan? Arrangements? Don't deny it. You were seen going up to his lodgings. Well, that was after my wife was kidnapped. I asked him to help me find her, that's all. You gave him money? We know you've got money. No. Uh, yes, I, I let him off the rent. I, I gave him a bit. I helped him find my wife. Rescue her? Uh, yes, rescue her. And when she arrived back at your house, probably on a prearranged signal... She's back. They let her go. Your hireling, D'Artagnan, attacked four policemen who'd been waiting for her and wished her away. I don't know anything about that. I deny everything. But... Bring in the prisoner, D'Artagnan. Bring in D'Artagnan. In you. But that's not D'Artagnan. My God, man, are you going to lie about everything? You think I don't know my own lodgers? D'Artagnan's a young man. He's in a company of guards. This one's a musketeer and twice his age. Look at him. What do you try to do to me? Are you D'Artagnan or not? Not in the least. 
you said you were. Not at all. I said, have it your own way. So what is your name? Atos. It's not a name, it's a Greek mountain. Nevertheless. Oh, my God, take this fellow away. Come on, Monsieur Mountain. Take him back to his cell. Come on, you. <laughs> You're a fool, you know, Bonacieux. <laughs> you should have confessed. It would have been better. <laughs> well, you're out of my hands now. You're for someone else. What? Who? Oh, oh. 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 You'll see. Oh. Warder, take him away. <laughs> in the Cardinal's room, in the Cardinal's house, Armand Jean du Plessis, Cardinal Richelieu, stands looking into the fire. Churchman, soldier, Lover, writer, political strategist, eyes that miss nothing, a driven man. Waiting for him to speak, a tall, dark, sallow man with a scar on his cheek. You're sure of this, Rochefort? They met? At the Louvre last night. I have it from Madame de Lanois. You know, she's one of ours. Yes, yes. Tell me exactly what happened. The Queen was in her bedchamber with her ladies-in-waiting. Just after midnight, a messenger came in with an embroidered handkerchief. The Queen grew pale, left the room hurriedly. Donna Estefania went with her. The Queen came back. She was carrying a rosewood box. What was in the box? The twelve diamond tags the King gave her for her birthday. How long was she away? Not long. Half an hour. She came back with wet eyes. Wet eyes? And the box? As you know, Madame de Lanois is mistress of the robes. She searched for the box this morning, told the Queen it seemed to be missing. What did the Queen say? She grew confused, said one of the tags was broken and she'd sent the box to the jeweller for repair. You've checked with the jeweller? He knows nothing of it. Ah... We have a rush for. But where the devil was the Duke hiding? Ask them to send in the draper. They come back in when he leaves. Yes, Monseigneur. Richelieu turns to study a map spread out on a table. He sighs. It said the Queen once repelled his advances. On such details hang histories. Monsieur Bonacieux? It's gone, no, 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 no. Monseigneur will do. Leave us, Vitre. Monseigneur. Long live the Cardinal. Amen to that, and may your life continue, monsieur, in spite of the charge of high treason against you. High treason? It's probably a mistake. You look an honest man. Oh, I am, I am. So you'll tell me honestly all you know. Please sit. I don't know anything. Come, come, we all know things. Your wife lived at the Louvre. Exactly. I only saw one night a week, so how could I... Thursdays. You'd escort her home? Well, yes. You know what it's like on the streets at night. A straight home? Uh, no, Monseigneur. Hardly ever. Uh, she'd have calls to make first. Did she now? Where were they? Uh, some draper's shops. Orders from the Queen, she said. You know the addresses? Oh, yes. Uh, 25 Rue de Vaugirard. One in the Rue des Up. Uh, 75. Yes, 75. Uh, one moment. Uh, 75. You went in with her? No, no, no. Uh, she always told me to wait outside. So you did. You're a very accommodating husband. Thank you, Monseigneur. Have you anything else to tell me? Uh, yes, Monseigneur. As a matter of fact, I have. Uh, there's a man outside with a scar. I've seen him hanging about near my wife. I'm sure he's the one who kidnapped her. Uh, oh, uh, no, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Obviously, I'm quite wrong. Mistaken identity. We all make mistakes. Uh, yes, Monseigneur. I mean, not you, Monseigneur. Long live the Cardinal. Hey, come, don't be frightened of me. You've been very helpful, my dear fellow. Have I? Why, you've given me the addresses where agents of our enemies were staying. I apologise for the stupid mistake which has kept you here. You mean I can... Go, yes. Here in this purse are 300 pistoles. Oh. Call it compensation or reward, if you like, for services rendered or to be rendered. Oh, Monseigneur, I'm overwhelmed. No, no, it's the least I can do. You're a good, honest, loyal chap. I can see that at once. I should like to see you again. Thank you God. won't object to dropping in from time to time oh. if you have any news you think might interest me? No, 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 no not at the least. Au revoir, then. Uh, au revoir, Monseigneur. <laughs> Long live the Cardinal. Au revoir. Oh. I've just bought a singing bird, Rochefort. Monseigneur? Here are two addresses. The Duke of Buckingham has been hiding in one, and his accomplice, Madame de Chevreuse, in the other. They'll have flown the nest by now, but you'd better check. Is Vitre outside? Yes, he's waiting. Send him in, please. Yes, Monseigneur. Send them straight to me. Come in, Vitre, just a moment. There. Vitre, I see you're ready to travel. Ride straight to the coast, no stops, and to London. As soon as you arrive, give this to Milady. Here is a bill for 200 pistoles. Cash it with my treasurer. Return in six days, and you'll get the same again. And off you go. Milady, says the letter, be at the next ball attended by the Duke of Buckingham. Sewn to his doublet will be 12 diamond tags. Cut two of them off. Send them straight to me. 
And what of our friends, the Musketeers and D'Artagnan? Well, we know where Athos is. Aramis, whose address is 25 Rue de Vaugirard, one of the addresses given by Bonacieux, strangely enough, has applied for a few days' leave and left Paris for family business, he says. And when, after three days, Athos has still not been released from prison, Porthos and D'Artagnan put the matter to Monsieur de Treville, captain of the regiment, whose musketeers are his children. Cardinal, this is intolerable. Madame de Chevreuse is supposed to be exiled to Tours. I thought you kept an eye on everybody. She slipped through her net, I'm afraid. That damned woman is in league with the Queen. God knows what affair they've been arranging. Some political intrigue, no doubt. <laughs> Damn politics. Affairs of the heart I'm talking about. Come, Your Majesty. Do you trust women? We are not talking of women, but of the Queen. I'm sure she not stoop oh, to... Oh, are you? Well, I'm not. But oh, damn it! I'm going straight to face with it. With what? With. Ah, is that you, Treville? Come in. I've got something to say to you about your damned musketeers. I've been hearing some fine stories, and I want an explanation. The only story I know, sire, is that one of them, a loyal soldier who's fought many a battle on your behalf, has been arrested and thrown into prison for no reason. No reason. To set upon a party of police and prevent them arresting an enemy of the state is no reason. I've a good mind to lock them all up. And as for this troublemaker, D'Artagnan... D'Artagnan? It's not on his behalf I'm complaining. Then who the devil are you talking about? Athos. Athos? Cardinal, you said it was D'Artagnan. No, sir, it was in D'Artagnan's room. That you had Athos arrested? Why, he said he was D'Artagnan. He came to D'Artagnan's room to say he was D'Artagnan and get arrested. What's the point of that? Obviously, D'Artagnan persuaded him. Your Majesty, D'Artagnan is little more than a boy. Athos is twice his age, persuaded him. And why should he? He hasn't run away, I've only just left him. I can't make head or tail of this. Treville, wasn't it this D'Artagnan who wounded one of the Cardinal's guards the other week? Jussac, sire, yes. Athos wounded another in the same brawl, if you remember. I dare say grudges are born. Well, Cardinal, what am I to make of it all? I'm prepared to swear to the guilt of one of those two, Your Majesty. But you don't know which. And I'm convinced of their innocence, sire. Then what the devil am I to do? Obviously, the matter should be decided by a court of law. Yes. Yes. Let the law decide. Meanwhile, I take it Atos is to be set free? Uh, I think that would not Unless be... Unless you wish to arrest D'Artagnan as well, and perhaps one or two others of my men in case it's somebody else altogether. Now, now, Treville. Yes. Let him go. I'll sign an order. Anything else, Treville? No? Off you go, then. Your Majesty. Your Eminence. So... That's that. Have we anything else to talk about, Cardinal? Nothing of importance, Your Majesty. I shall find out how Madame de Chevreuse slipped through our net. Yes, do. And the Duke of Buckingham. What did you say? Buckingham was also in Paris. Did I not tell you? I'm damned if you told me. Oh, God in heaven. That man here? Did they meet? Did they meet? I'm sure the Queen would do nothing so rash. Are you? Well, I'm not. Of course, that's what the Chevreuse woman was doing here. Arranging to dishonour me. God, the Queen will pay for this. This is treason, high treason. You have no proof, Your Majesty. Who needs proof? Women are women. The Queen is what she is. Though it is true that Madame de Lanois reported that the Queen this morning had obviously been crying. Well, there you are. And said something about the diamond tags you gave her having gone missing. My tags? She gave him... But my... I'm sure you're accusing her unjustly. <laughs> Never unjust. I'm Louis the Just. Then... May I make a suggestion, simply to put your mind at rest? The city councillors are giving a ball in ten days' time. Graciously agree to attend with your queen. Take her? After this? And let her know that when it takes place, you would like to see her wearing her diamond tags. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, yes. You're right, as usual. I'll tell her. I'll be as nice as pie. That evening, Madame Bonacieux, the draper's wife, is in a closet in the Queen's chambers arranging some gowns when she hears the King enter. Terrified, she stays where she is and hears all that is said. Only when he is left does she slip out to find Her Majesty on her knees. Forgive me, Mum. I overheard everything, Your Majesty. May I be bold? Go on. Is it true the diamond tags are in England with the Duke of Buckingham? God help me, Constance, yes. I hope he will help, Mum, but we must do our bit. We? What business is it of yours? No, Mum, I'll go now. No, stay. Forgive me, I'm terrified. You see, the King's jealousy is... If he finds out, I fear for my life. Courage, Your Majesty. 
You must write a letter to the Duke. And who will take it, you stupid girl? Give it to me. I'll find a messenger. Trust you? Put my life in your hands? Yes. Trust me. There. A kiss, woman to woman. Thank you, my loyal Constance. I shall write the letter. And may God speed your messenger. Amen, Your Majesty. And Madame Bonacieux, who also now has tears in her eyes, who knows why she has nothing to lose, is off and out of the Louvre and back to give the letter to her good, honest husband, Bonacieux, little knowing that he is now the Cardinal's man. <laughs> In episode two of The Three Musketeers, Jamie Glover played D'Artagnan, Anton Lesser Aramis, Timothy Spall Portos, and Robert Glenister Athos. Cardinal Richelieu, Julian Glover, the King, Nicholas Bolton, the Queen, Teresa Gallagher. Buckingham, Michael Cochran, Madame Bonacieux, Helena Breck, Bonacieux, Norman Bird, de Trevi, Malcolm Ward, Planchet, Dominic Letts, Rochefort, Michael Onslow, Magistrate, John Evitz, and the Warder, Tom Bevan. The narrator was John Rowe. The Three Musketeers was dramatized by James Saunders and directed by Martin Jenkins. The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas, dramatized in six episodes by James Saunders. Episode 3, A Perilous Journey. Last week we left Madame Bonacieux hurrying home from the Louvre with a letter for the Duke of Buckingham, which, if delivered, might save the Queen from disgrace or worse. She is to enlist the help of her husband, the draper Bonacieux, not knowing he is in the pay of Cardinal Richelieu. Oh. 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 Monsieur, thank God you're here. Yes, and thank God for you too. Look at the mess the police have made searching this place. What were they looking for? I don't know. Oh, monsieur, your moment has come. Huh? You are to do a service for an important person, a very important person. Oh. I can't tell you that. You are to go straight to London. London? Really? You are to carry a letter to... Somebody. To him alone. I'm not meddling in politics. It's dangerous. It's a personal matter. You don't have to know anything about it. There's no danger. Who'd suspect you of anything? They locked me up in the Bastille, didn't they? And they let you out again, didn't they? Uh, Will you do it? Why should I? For France. Uh, For somebody very high in court. For me. For money. Ah. Look. Do you see this ring? Oh. This is worth... Thousands. And that's just to cover the journey. Oh, so it's a woman. Never mind who it is. Will you do it? I ask on my knees. Let me see that ring again. Oh. No. No. This smells to me of intrigue. I'm not getting mixed up with intrigue. Besides, I don't think the Cardinal would like it. Since when have you taken the Cardinal's side? Since I met him. Since we became friends. What are you talking about? He sent for me. He got me out of the Bastille. He wanted my advice. We get on very well together. You've had dealings with the Cardinal? You fool! Not such a fool. Look at this. And there's more where that came from if I play my cards right. So I don't need money, you see. You took that from the Cardinal? For services rendered. For services to be rendered. His very words. <laughs> I met the Comte de Rochefort as well. A very nice man. The man with the scar and skin like tripe. He is the man that had me kidnapped and it was the Cardinal's doing. They must have had their reasons. Yes. To torture me into giving information about the Queen so they can ruin her. Oh, fool, you scoundrel! You don't come back home with me, madam. And to think that I was sorry for you. Forget it, then. I have asked you for nothing. It is a trivial business to do with some trinkets. Doesn't matter. What are you crying about? I come out of the Bastille and you start crying. No, uh, wait, wait. Look, I've changed my mind. We are man and wife, after all. Even if I do hardly ever see you. Uh, give me the letter. I'll see what I can do. I said forget it. I, I, I don't need your help. As you like. <clears throat> oh, uh, look, um, I have to go out now. I've just remembered something. 
No hard feelings, eh? I shan't be long. I'll come straight back and escort you to the Louvre. Don't bother. I'll find my own way. Um, please yourself. See you next week. I dare say. There's a good girl. Give me a kiss, then. <laughs> and if you have time to clear this place up a bit. Au revoir. Monsieur. Who's that? It's I, D'Artagnan. Where are you? Over your head. Do you see a knot hole in the ceiling? Have you been listening? Open your door for me. I'm coming down. How much did you hear? Everything. You look frightened. Do you still not trust me? I trust nobody, monsieur. But you've no one else to turn to, have you? No, no one. Then you must let me help you. Oh. Why do you hesitate? I hesitate for the Queen, not for myself. Do you know Monsieur de Treville, who calls the King's Musketeers? I have heard the Queen speak of him. Do you think he's a cardinal's man? Oh, certainly not. He's one of the few people she trusts. Then go to him. Tell him your secret. Ask if he thinks I can be entrusted with it. It is the Queen's secret, not mine. You told your husband half of it. Oh, my husband's a fool. A dangerous fool. He realises he's on his way now to pass on the news. Oh, God. Well, I trust you. Listen... You know the Duke of Buckingham was in Paris because you saw him yourself. He met the Queen, you must have guessed that. Mm. She gave him a memento. Some diamond tags given to her by the King. The Cardinal has found out. Has he told the King? Oh, he dropped hints. So the King has told the Queen they're to attend the City Councilor's ball and that she's to wear the diamond tags. She must get them back. She must. Oh, God forgive me. Now you know everything. When is the ball? Oh, ten days' time. Give me the letter. The Queen will have her tags in time. Here. Give it to the Duke, only to him. And if you let it fall into the wrong hands, I swear I shall curse you as I kill myself. And I swear if I let it fall into anyone's hand but the Duke's, your curses will be wasted on a dead man. Ten days, I must go. Wait. You need money. Here. The money Bonacieux had from the Cardinal. The same. I shall save the Queen with Cardinal's money. Magnificent. She won't forget this. And neither shall I. Ah, then I shall have my reward. But listen, the Cardinal will know everything by now. You'll be in danger. Go straight to the Louvre. Stay as close to the Queen as you can. You may be safe there. Oh, God willing. I'll see you again? Yes. Yes, of course. May I leave you something to remember me by? If you like. What? My love. Oh, there's no time to talk about that. Go, please. I'll go when I have an answer. May I? Yes. And yes. Now, now I can conquer the world. From the window, she watches him stride off, a lovesick young man in guard's uniform, a rapier at side and a letter from the Queen in his pocket. Does she love him? Yes, of course. She falls to her knees. Dear God, protect the Queen from her enemies and keep him safe. Monsieur de Treville. Well, my lad, what can I do for you? Something important from the way your eyes are shining. You haven't been getting into scrapes with the Cardinal's guards again. It is important, monsieur, vitally important. It concerns the reputation of the Queen. What? Perhaps even her life. Wait. Never talk confidences with doors open, D'Artagnan. Now, the Queen has entrusted me with a secret mission which I must tell you about. Have you her permission to tell me? No, sir, but I need your help. I don't have to break a confidence to get that. Now, what do you want? Very well. I'll say only that I must go to London. I wondered if you would ask Monsieur des Essart for leave of absence from his guards. Does the Cardinal have wind of this letter? You know about the letter? I didn't, but I do now. Don't fall into traps when you're questioned, lad. Does the Cardinal know? He will by now. Are you going alone? Yes. Well, I'll see that you get a good burial, sir. You won't get ten miles out of Paris. You'll end in a ditch. And I shall have died doing my duty. And that will be a great comfort to the Queen. You're to do a job, not indulge in heroics. Now, who can you take with you? The musketeers, Athos, Porthos and Aramis. Will they do it? We'll do anything for each other, sir. All for one and one for all. Good. It'll be a sad loss, but one of you might make it. I'll arrange leave of absence for them too. Have you got money? Three hundred pistoles. Three hundred? You could get to China on that. Goodbye, sir. Good luck. You'll need it.
It's Monsieur D'Artagnan, sir. Aramis, are you alone? D'Artagnan, just the fellow I need to cheer me up. Make yourself scarce, Bez, and I'm sick of your company. Next to us. What? I think so. What's the matter with you, Aramis? Me? Oh, I've been translating St. Augustine into Latin. It's depressed me somewhat. Really? Nothing to do with the lady with the embroidered handkerchief? I don't know what you're talking about. Madame de Chevreuse? Shh, shh. What, what do you know about her? Only that she was in Paris on secret business. How did and staying you... downstairs in the house. She was in Paris to see me. She was in prison to see me. Well, let's say to see you as well. Don't worry, she's back in tours now. But she left no message. She just disappeared. She didn't want to incriminate you, of course. Incriminate? You know the house was searched. What an ungrateful man you are. Well, thank God. I thought she deserted me. I feel better already. Look, no word of this to Atos or Portos, eh? My lips are sealed. Good man. Ah, listen. Something strange. Look at this. What is it? Leave of absence from the musketeers, signed by Treville. It just arrived, and I didn't even ask for it. Good. You know about it? I'll explain when the other two arrive. I've sent word for them to come straight here with their servants. Why? What's on? Monsieur's Athos and Porthos, sir. What's going on? I met Athos on my way. We've both got leave of absence and asked for. Servants outside. Out you lot. D'Artagnan, I was in the middle of a most pleasurable occasion when your damn message came. This is better be important. I'm sure your pleasurable occasion will keep for a week or two, Porthos. Assuming you survive. Ah, an adventure. Dangerous? Perilous. We are going to London, gentlemen. What for? To deliver a letter. Postman? On whose behalf? You don't have to know that. You're wrong there. If I'm to be a messenger boy, I have to know why. You have to know nothing of the sort, Portos. All for one and one for all. Quite right, Atos. If it's good enough for D'Artagnan, it should be good enough for us. Let me say it's a royal commission. All right. I'm with you, of course. The king? Oh, queen. Ah. Am I allowed to ask who's likely to try to kill me? Yes. The cardinal? Ah, enough said. Right, here's a plan. Portos, how can you make a plan if you don't listen, even listen. know... If it's that dangerous, we'd best go separately. We each make for Calais. I start first by the Boulogne Road to confuse them. Athos, Amiens Road, Aramis Noyen Road, then you, D'Artagnan, by any road you like. Whoever reaches Calais for... Without the letter? What? Quite right, Athos. There's only one letter, and that's sealed. Ah, so we must go together. I have the letter here in doublet. If I'm killed, another takes it and rides on, and so on to London. We leave tonight. Agreed? Agreed. One for all, and all for one. One for all, and all for one. And so, at two o'clock in the morning, eight men passed through Denis Gate. Athos, Porthos, Aramis and D'Artagnan, riding in line on their four black horses, and behind them, armed to the teeth, their servants. By nine, they've reached Chantilly, taken a good breakfast at the inn, and are about to set off once more. The horses are ready to leave, Monsieur Porthos. Right, let's quit so much coming. We're making good time. We'll be in Calais in three days. Three? We'll do it in two? Three? Do you want to kill the horses? What if we do? They can't take us across, Keep can they? Keep your voice down, Portus. What? You'll be heard. That fellow across the room is listening. Him is a drunk. Look at him. Hey, you there. Musketeer. You talking to me? Who do you think? Join me in a toast. To the cardinal. <sighs> Humor him. The cardinal. The cardinal. The cardinal. The cardinal. Right, let's go. Hey, uh, stranger. You can drink one with us before we go. The king. What king? Louis XIII, you numbskull. The only king I know is the cardinal. What, you drunken sot? What do you call me? (laughs) Come outside and fight. Gladly. Portos, you idiot. We've no time for this. But I can't back out now, can I? We can't wait. Finish him off quickly and catch us up. Bring him off, my horse. One god already. What a buffoon that man is. But why do you think the fellow picked on Portos? He always behaves as if he's in command, that's why. Beauvais and a two hours stop to rest the horses and give Portos time to catch up. No sign of him, however, so they continue. Don't you know anything cheerful? Huh? Let's sing a Gascon song. I began to dance between two gentlemen, mother. I began to dance between two gentlemen. Quiet! Look ahead! What? There! Good narrows with undergrowth both sides. I thought I saw a movement. Perfect spot for an ambush. All we can do is gallop straight through and hope for the best. Planchet and the rest of you, yes. close up. When we gallop, gallop. Now, gallop! Gallop! Range. We're safe now. All but Porter's is man. Mousqueton? I saw him fall. Grab his horse, Plochet. At least yes, have a replacement horse. I'd rather have a replacement hat. They shot mine off. Thank God. Didn't put the letter in it. <laughs> Aramis, right, so are you all right? Go on in the shoulder. Can you still ride? Yes, yes. Let's get on. Come on. Ah! 
Two hours later, outside the inn at Crèvecoeur, Aramis falls onto his horse's neck, blood dripping slowly from his dangling arm. There they leave him, with his man Bazin, and ride on. Four now, where there had been eight. What town is this? Amiel. And there's an inn. Hmm. We'd better spend the night here. If we don't, the horses will die on us. Right. Grimalki, watch. Landlord! Hello! What time is it? Midnight. Landlord! Coming! Coming! Grimo, bed the horses down and bed yourself down with them. Mm, delightful. What? <laughs> Nothing. Go through the back, you'll find stables there, water and fodder. Welcome, gentlemen. Food and wine and two mattresses on the floor. But I have excellent beds. Two uh, mattresses. Ow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. And Planchet? Planchet will sleep against our door. We take no chances. Then we need another mattress. He'll sleep too well on a mattress. Charming. What's that, Planchet? Ow. Nothing, sir. Sir. told you before, Bonchet, you don't have to shout to wake me. Oh, it's Grimaud, sir. I found him in the stables. They've beaten him senseless. What? I've had him taken in, but he's in no state to travel. And the horses? Done for. I don't know what they've done to them, but they're not fit to ride. Their heads are down. The devil! And another thing. There are two fresh horses, bridled and saddled by the gate. I asked someone whose they were, and he said, two gentlemen stayed here last night. One of them has a scar, sir. Damnation! The man from Merng, my sworn enemy. Where's Atos? I told him a few seconds ago and he marched off. Oh. Yes. What's that? Oh. Outside, quickly. Hey, hey, Atos! Uh, they got me. Save yourself, D'Artagnan. Quickly, you, you need help. Oh. I'll hold them. Ride. Those horses, Planchet. Ride. Where are they? By the gate. Run then, damn you. Run, Planchet. Run. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, whoa, steady, steady. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now ride, Planchet. Ride as you've never ridden before. For Calais and London. Calais. That looks like a sea captain on the quayside, sir. Come, we'll try our luck with him. It seems that gentleman ahead of us had the same idea. The forges have just come through. Nobody can embark without a permit from the cargo. I have that. When do you sail? Within the half hour to catch the tide. Good. I have a trifle of business still to do. I'll be back in time. Come, Lubin. Yes, sir. Can I help you, sir? Thank you, Captain. That gentleman has just reminded me. I, too, have a trifle of business. Of Come, course, Monchet. That does it. Don't be defeatist. That pair ahead of us. If I take on the master, can you deal with the servant? He's not a picard. You can tell from his walk. Yes, I'll deal with him. Wait till they get round that corner. My compliments, sir. And mine to you. What do you want? I want your embarkation permit, if you please. Are you mad? No, just an urgent business. I apologise for delaying you. May I have it? No, sir, you may not. Then I must take it. <laughs> Damn if you will. You ban pistol. Roche. No, you don't. Let me out, insolence. And death, you can't no. And death, my friends. <laughs> You're hurt, sir. I'll live, Planchet. How's your fellow? Oh, he won't wake up for a while, and I didn't get a scratch. You insolent devil. You'll get a thrashing when I have the leisure for it. Suffice to say, I'm carrying something more important than my owner. And let's say I've grown up a little. Now, where's his permit? I'll find it. <laughs> the Comte de Ward and his servant, Luba. Good. Come along, Luba. Back to the ship. And to England. Monsieur d'Artagnan, Your Grace. D'Artagnan? Wait a moment. Do I know you, young man? I insulted you one night on the Pont Neuf, Your Grace. So did, yes. Well, what do you want with me? That's so great. This letter will explain everything. Who's it from? Her Majesty. What? Give it to me. There's blood on this letter. I beg your pardon, Your Grace. The blood is mine. Mm -hmm. This is appalling. Give me that box, sir. This? Yes, that one. There. Italics, now. Take them. Good God. There are two missing. Are you sure, sir? Well, of course, I'm damn well sure. See, they've been cut with scissors. I remember the royal ball at Windsor. Lady de Winter was particularly nice to me that evening. I wondered why. The king will surely notice. I know that, damn you. When is the ball in Paris? Five days' time, sir. Five days. Let me think. Let me think. Monday, October the 10th. 
and all Paris is talking of the ball to be held in the city hall to be attended by both their majesties. At midnight, the king's carriage leaves the Louvre and makes its way to the city hall through streets bedecked with coloured lanterns. Only a few of the keener eyed notice as he waves graciously that his expression is not that of a king out to amuse himself. <laughs> Your Majesty. Oh, God, no. There you are. I'm told there is a light supper ready in the room prepared for you, if you wish to retire there. I'm not hungry. A fancy dress has been laid out for you there. I, as you see, am a Spanish nobleman, a compliment I hope the Queen will appreciate. You will look every inch the first gentleman of France, and she the first lady. I look forward to seeing you dancing the Mer Laison together, your favourite. I helped choose the costumes myself. Hers will be a perfect setting for the diamond tags. If she wears them. Of course she'll wear them. You really should pay no attention to Tittle Tattle. Tittle Tattle? You mean it's got about them? You know what it's like at court, sire. They love to gossip. But this is the only reason I suggested she wear the tags tonight, to stop any rumours and to put your majesty's mind at rest. You're the one who put it into my mind. I've been in torment. If she has the tags, I shall be most displeased. I mean, with you, Carl. Could that be her now? Oh, do you see all the city bigwigs and their wives are clustering round the entrance? Out of my way! Your Royal Majesty, on behalf of the Council of Paris, I wish to express our gratitude for the great honour you bestow on us. Madam. Madam. Sire? Cardinal? And may I say your majesty looks magnificent? Madam, where are my tags? Your tags? My diamond tags. I asked you to wear them. Well? They are... I was afraid I might be jostled in the crowd and lose them. They're so valuable. I asked for you to wear them. Have them fetched, please. No, but... I want them fetched! As you wish. Conversation stops. The crowds part, awestruck, as Anne of Austria, carrying her beauty and queenship as of divine right, makes her way with her ladies to the dressing room prepared for her. Only inside does the mantle drop, and a woman among women, hopeless and terrified, sinks to the floor in despair. Oh, pray God. Meanwhile, by a side gate of the Louvre, another woman stands in the shadows, still hoping for a miracle, though she knows there is none. The beautiful, arrogant young man lies somewhere dead. But still she waits. Still she listens. Oh, can it be? Oh, please, God, can it be? Madame Bonacieux! Here, Monsieur D'Artagnan! Here! Do you have them? I have them. Take them right, fly the city hall given to Monsieur de la Porte. Hurry, hurry! When shall I see you again? I'll send you a note. Go now. You promise? I promise. Now go. Adieu. Yeah. I love you. In the ballroom, an expectant hush has turned to uneasiness. The king is to lead the dancing of the Merlaison with his queen. The orchestra waits. The guests wait. The king waits. But where is the queen? Perhaps she has trouble clipping on your diamond tags. Diamond tags? I wish I'd never given them to her. If she does wear them. Of course she'll wear them. I ordered her to. My God, if she doesn't, I... There she is. If she's wearing them, she's wearing them, do you see? Perhaps you should count them. There are twelve. I know how many there are. I have two here. What? Let me see. Where the devil did you get these? Perhaps you should ask Her Majesty how she came to lose them, whose hands they passed through, to whom she gave them. What are you saying? It's beginning. You should take your place, and while you're dancing, count them, count them. The Queen is radiant. She dances like the goddess of dance itself. Her dress sparkles with diamonds. Her face is alight with the joy of dance. As for the king, as they weave and change partners back and forth in elaborate figures. One, two, three, damn. Two, four, five, damn. The cardinal watches and waits, fingering the diamond tags, his agent in London, known to us as Milady, cut from the doublet of the Duke of Buckingham. The dance ends. The Queen retires to greet the Cardinal. The King, left with the President's wife, suddenly leaves her to join the Queen and Cardinal. Madam, 
Thank you for wearing my tags, but I understand you lost two of them. Oh, no, I have them all. Give them to her, Cardinal. And perhaps you can tell me, madam. Two more? But this will make fourteen. I think not, madam. Count them, then. Shall I turn slowly to help? Perhaps you would care to count, too, Your Eminence. Mathematics is not His Majesty's strong suit. Two, four, five, six, seven. Turn, madam, turn. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Do you make it the same, Your Eminence? Cardinal? What the devil is all this about? I... Yes, do tell us. Is it a game? Sir, I'm sorry. I wish to make Her Majesty a present of these tags, but didn't dare. I thought perhaps... You were bashful. How uncharacteristic of you. But how kind. Thank you. I accept them with pleasure. And how like the originals. I'm sure they cost you a great deal of effort. And time. And money. I think we should change now. The banquet will be beginning. Oh, what a splendid evening this is. Yes, we'd better change. And, Cardinal, I never want to hear another word about those damned diamond tags. I suggest you stop listening to court gossip. Come, my dear. Come. As they cross to the dressing rooms, they pass in the crowd a young guardsman, disgracefully turned out, struggling to keep his eyes open. The Duke of Buckingham employs the most skilful jeweller in England, but even he needed a day or two to make such perfect copies. D'Artagnan is too tired even to worry that he has made enemies of the most evil woman in France and the most dangerous man, a man whose eyes, as they even now light on him, fill with malice. No one makes a mockery of Armand Jean du Plessis, Duc de Richelieu. Someone will pay for this humiliation. Pay with his life. In episode three of The Three Musketeers, Jamie Glover played D'Artagnan, Anton Lesser Aramis, Timothy Spall Portos, and Robert Glenister Atos. Cardinal Richelieu, Julian Glover, the King, Nicholas Bolton, the Queen, Teresa Gallagher. Buckingham, Michael Cochrane, Madame Bonacieux, Helena Breck, Bonacieux, Norman Bird. De Trevi, Malcolm Ward, Planchet, Dominic Letts, Grimaud, Tom Bevan, Bazin, David Rowan, De Ward, Kim Wall, Soldier, Paul Panting, and the Captain, James Taylor. The narrator was John Rowe. The Three Musketeers was dramatized by James Saunders and directed by Martin Jenkins. The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. Dramatized in six episodes by James Saunders. Episode 4 The Mark of Satan. The young Gascon d'Artagnan has made an enemy of Cardinal Richelieu and of Milady, his evil emissary. His three companions, Athos, Porthos, and Aramis, lie wounded somewhere in France, perhaps dead. But he'll worry about all that when he wakes in the morning. <laughs> sir, you wake, sir. What is it, Planchet? A letter, sir. A letter? Who brought it? Nobody, unless it was the devil. Shall I burn it, sir? Give it here. I have someone's thanks to give you and my own. Come to Saint Cloud tonight. Be opposite the summer house of Monsieur Deste's villa at ten, CB. Constance Bon is here. You're wrong, Planchet. This isn't from the devil. An angel, maybe? Don't be impertinent. See who that is. And get me some breakfast. I'm starving. Mm. 
Landlord, sir. Bonus hit. Now, there's a coincidence. Your name sprang to my mind just a moment ago. What can I do for you? Breakfast, Planchet. Sir, I'm glad to see you're in good spirits, monsieur, after your journey. What journey? Oh, uh, my mistake. Only I haven't seen you for some days, and this uh, mud on your boots didn't come from Paris, I think. Uh, not that it's any of my business. I took some friends to take the waters at Forge, if you must know, and left them there. Uh, don't tell me you had to get back for the ladies. They couldn't do without you, I'm <laughs> Nail on the head, Bonus yet. One in particular, as a matter of fact. And how is your good lady? Well, I trust, now she's been released. Oh, yes, uh, that's why I'm here, to thank you for your kind efforts to find her when she was kidnapped. I'm sure she'll tell you how grateful she is, too. Only, uh, as you know, she can't get away from service at the Louvre. She's there tonight, for instance. That's mm -hmm. hard on you, Bonacieux, and such a pretty wife. Yes, isn't she? Oh, 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 you're right. Uh, uh, you look pale. Uh, uh, not to worry. Uh, uh, spasm. I, I get spasms. Mm. Uh, you're uh, out tonight, are you? I only ask because since all this trouble, the kidnapping of one thing and another and putting me in the Bastille and all, I get nervous and like to know who goes in and out. I understand. Well, don't worry if you hear a noise in the early hours tomorrow. It'll be me coming in. <laughs> well, I I'll leave you to your breakfast and... Au revoir. Au revoir, Monsieur Bonacieux. Put it down there, Planchet. Now, listen. As soon as I've eaten, I'm off to see Monsieur de Treville. Here's a crown. You can take the day off. Huh? What are you looking so sour about? He's a bad lot, that Bonacieux. I wouldn't trust him if I was you. You Picards are a suspicious race. He's a simple soul, poor fellow. A simple villain, if you ask me. I'm not asking you. Stop arguing with your master and let uh, me eat. So, my lad, I trust whatever business took you out of Paris was concluded satisfactorily? It was, thank you, Monsieur de Treville. I caught a glimpse of your double last night. Sir? At the city councillor's ball. The disreputable-looking ruffian covered in mud and dust. The disgrace to the guard's uniform he wore. You'll not catch one of my musketeers looking like that. No, sir. Talking of musketeers, where are Athos, Portos and Aramis? Did they return with you? No, monsieur. They fell by the wayside. Are you going back to find them? Yes, sir. Tomorrow. Why not today? Don't tell me. I see it in your face. You've an assignation, is that it? More important than your friends, is it? Don't answer. Listen now. I'm going to talk seriously to you. I spoke with the king and queen last night. They were both suddenly in very high spirits. I imagine your business had something to do with that, whereas the cardinal looked distinctly put out. I s What's that monstrosity on your finger? A ring, sir. Yeah, I can see that. Obviously paste. Damn bad taste. It's real. Let me see. Mon dieu. This is worth a thousand pistoles at least. Who gave you this? The queen, sir. She sent you this? She gave me it. I was taken to a room and told to wait. There was a tapestry curtain. I could hear voices behind it. Then a white arm came through the curtain. It was like a vision. I fell on my knees and kissed the hand and... and was left with this. Very romantic, I'm sure. Now listen. The Cardinal never forgets an injury until he's had his revenge. And don't think he doesn't know who did this injury. Confide in no one, not even your mistress. I see you're blushing... Remember, the Cardinal works through women. Forget this assignation. Leave Paris today. Now, go and find your friends. I see I'm talking to thin air. Leave tomorrow, then, if you're still alive. After leaving de Treville, the young Gascon, impressed by the old soldier's warnings, decided not to return to his rooms that day. He called at the houses of his three friends to find that none of them had been heard of since they left. At nine o'clock that evening, he started off with Planchet for saint Cloud, and, he hoped, a gift of gratitude from his beloved, Constance Bonacieux. Ten o'clock. D'Artagnan waits silently at the place appointed. In the summer house opposite, the windows are shuttered, all but one on the first floor from which a soft light shines. The scent of linden blossom is strong in the warm night air. No movement, no sound. Still he waits, eyes fixed on the lighted window, heart racing. But not from fear, no, not from fear. Eleven, and still no sound. Silence. D'Artagnan suddenly shivers in the warm, still air. Can this be fear? And is it for him or for her? He crosses the road, clambers up the wall, from there to a lime tree whose branches overhang the window. Mon Dieu! Inside the room, chaos, the furniture overturned. And that stain, can it be blood? Constance! Constance! In the muddy ground by the wall, a confusion of footprints and wheel marks 
A carriage stopped here, turned, went back the way it had come, to Paris. Imagine, if you will, the turmoil in the heart of this young Gascon. His instinct, as always, is to act. But how? I don't know if she's dead or alive, Monsieur de If she were dead, they'd have left her there. I'm only surprised they didn't wait for you, or you'd be dead as well. Well, I warned you, this is obviously the Cardinal's doing. What can I do? Nothing. Nothing? I'll tell the Queen what's happened. She can make inquiries. Thank you. The Cardinal's planning an expedition to La Rochelle shortly. You'll be safer on the battlefield than you are here. Meanwhile, keep out of the way and pray. So, you're back, thank God. What What's happened? Two things. One, that simple soul Bonacier was out all night. How do you know? Because I saw him coming in this morning, didn't I? With mud on his boots, the same mud as on your boots. The devil! You mean... You mean he was at the fella last night? He must have been involved in kidnapping his own wife. Yes, sir, too. The captain of the Cardinal's Guard was here. To see me? To escort you to the Cardinal's house. The Cardinal wanted a chat to discuss your future. My future in the Bastille, probably. What did you tell him? Well, that you're out of town, of course, as I think we ought to be. I agree, but we can't. Something has come up. Mm, here we go again. Shh. Someone's on the stairs. Get your pistol, Blanche. Hold there if you value your life. What a welcome. Portos! Hermes, <laughs> Athos, you're alive! <laughs> Why shouldn't we be? But where have you been? Well, you left us, of course. Aramis had his shoulder to nurse. Not at all, that was a scratch. Only there happened to be some priests staying at the inn, so I stayed a few days to discuss the thesis under right for my ordination. Ordination? I told you. I'm going to take holy orders when all this is over. It's my true vocation. My subject is to be... Utraque manos in benedicendo, clericis inferioribus necessaria es. As for me, I'd have come back earlier after polishing off my attackers. They hardly touch me. But there happened to be some exceptional wine at the inn. It seemed a pity not to stay over a day or two. And the bandage round your head, Atos? I have a slight headache. It'll pass. And you, Portos, I see you're... Oh, oh, the most damnable luck. You know, when those blackguards set on me. I thought it was only one man. No, when I got outside, two or three others were waiting for me. I dealt with them easily enough, of course, and I was just dispatching the last of them when I slipped and sprained my knee. And, oh, 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 yes. So I was laid up for a while. It must have been a bad sprain. Quite bad. Luckily, the inn had tolerable victuals. So I see. What do you mean? Well, you seem to have put on weight. Unless there was a bandages around your middle. I tell you, he didn't touch me. He? They? Are you calling me a liar? No, no, no. I'm delighted you've all turned safely. Apart from anything else, I need your help. What is it now? Constance Bonacieux has been kidnapped again. You really are most careless with that seamstress of yours. Take my advice, D'Artagnan. This time, let her stay kidnapped. Women are sent from hell to trouble us. We're better off without them. But I love her. Love? Anyway, the king has other plans for us. Have you heard the news? The English are helping the Protestants fortify La Rochelle, so we're being sent there to thrash them. Let me give my opinion. Based on years of experience, a man lives for three things. Women, battles, and food and drink. Women can be done without now and then, and battles come in their own time. But food and drink are a necessity. So have you got any money? Yes. Good. Some rascal stole all mine that damned inn. You didn't happen to gamble it away while you were resting your knees? D'Artagnan, I resent your tone, but I'll let it pass. I suggest we go out and have the finest meal our money can buy. Over that, we'll discuss our future. One for all and all for one. All, all for, for one, one and one, one for all. all. Whatever. Eat. The meal is splendid. The decision they make over it, that they must wait on events. And so the weeks pass. Until early one morning, a strange sight is seen in the streets of Paris. A man, naked under a woman's gown, which he clutches above his knees as he runs barefoot and pell-mell along the deserted wet streets. The night watch, returning home, shuts his eyes tight and crosses himself. Atos! Atos, open up! God help! Grimo! Grimo, it's me, you fool! Don't tell you, let me in! Let him in, Grimo. What are you... Good God. Atos, I need your advice. It looks as if you do. Come in. I've been up all night drinking. I couldn't sleep. Grimo, another glass for the lady. Yes, sir. I've just had a terrifying experience. Atos, you know I've been seeking news of Constance Bonnes here. Because you love her, you told me. And I've told you women are devils and love is a snare and a delusion. But go on. Do you remember when I first came to Paris, I had a quarrel on the way with a man with a scar on his face? Yes, your man from Mung. And you vowed to get even with him. That's an old story. He was talking to a beautiful woman he addressed as Milady. Agents of the Cardinal. I learned that later from Monsieur de Treville. She was the one who stole the diamond tags from the Duke of Buckingham. The ones you went to England to fetch? Yes, and foiled her plot against the Queen. Well, as the boat was leaving Dover, I saw her again, standing on the deck, and from the look on her face, I was glad the sea was between us. Are you listening? I'm drunk, but I'm listening. Grimaud, pour a glass from Monsieur de Tagnon. Two weeks ago... Wait. 
Drink. <laughs> Go on. Two weeks ago, I saw her once more. Here in Paris. She was in a carriage, like the first time, talking to a man in the road. A man from Meaux? No, an Englishman. My God, Atos, the beauty of that woman. Her face has a kind of... So you challenged him? How did you know? You always do, don't you? I had to find a way of meeting her. Because her face has a kind of... Because I was sure she knew about Constance. I didn't tell you. I found an old man who'd seen her taken. He said in the carriage they put her in was a beautiful blonde lady. Blonde? Yes. Oh, she's got the fairest hair I've ever seen. Anyway, my challenge fell out perfectly. He finished on the ground with the point of my sword to his throat. Then I said, you're a man of honour, so though you're an Englishman, I shan't kill you on one condition, that you introduce me to the lady in the carriage, whom I love. Really? I had to say something, so we shook hands and became the best of friends. He's her brother-in-law. She married the former Lord de Winter, now dead. He introduced me to my lady as the man who'd saved his life, which I suppose I did. And I've been visiting her nearly every day since. Didn't she recognise you? She gave no sign. My God, Atos, what a woman. I felt drawn to her as if by magic, but at the same time there's something devilish. I said something the other day. Her face changed. She turned away. When she turned back, her face was as angelic as ever, but her handkerchief was stained with blood. She'd bitten her lip through. You've gone pale. What is it? Nothing. It reminded me of someone. Who? Never mind. Go on. She has a maid, Kitty, a charming girl who I could see had a fancy for me. <sighs> One evening, last week, she was taking me to my lady when she stopped, faced me, and took my hand. Sir, can I have a word with you? Of course, Kitty. Not here. This way. In here, please. What room is this? Mine, sir. That door is to my mistress's bedroom, but we're quite safe. She never goes to bed before midnight. Safe for what, Kitty? Do you think she loves you, sir? What a question. Yes, I think she's beginning to. She's deceiving you. She loves someone else. Who? The Comte de Ward. She's besotted with him. The Comte de Ward? The man I wounded at Calais? Yeah. Here's a letter she's written to him. My beloved... My beloved... You haven't answered my letter. Are your wounds still troubling you? Have you forgotten what passed between us? My heart and my body long for you. Come quickly, Clarice. Perfidy. Why are you showing me this, Kitty? Because I don't want to see you hurt like the others. What others? And because I blush for myself. They say all's fair in love and war. Kitty, my child. No, please. You don't love me. I can. Let me prove I do. Oh, sir. Oh. Oh, that's her. She's there. You must go. Kitty, come when I call. Uh, coming, my lady. Please go. You're early, my lady. I have a headache. Loosen my hair. My little Gascon friend didn't call this evening. No, my lady. Perhaps Monsieur de Trevis heard of it and warned him off. But he'll come back. I have him between my teeth. So you don't love him? Love him? I hate him. The fool could have killed Lord de Winter. He had his sword to his throat. But he let him live. Love him when he lost me a fortune. Of course, the de Winter estate would have come to you through your son. Apart from putting me out of favour with the Cardinal by spoiling my plan to ruin the Queen. Oh, just leave it! Yes, my lady. <sighs> no, I have a score or two to settle with that young man. You've taken his sweetheart from him. Isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> the draper's wife. That's nothing. No, I'll play with him for a while, then we'll see what I'll do. You can go to bed now, Kitty. Do, do you have the letter I gave you of the Comte Ward? Yes, my lady. Make sure he gets it first thing tomorrow. Oh, w wait, wait. Here. Take this ring. Give him that as well. Good night, my lady. She's not a woman, she's a fiend. You're still here. Kitty, listen to me. 
Do you know where Madame Bonacieux is? No, but she's alive. Then I'll find her. Meanwhile, I must have my revenge on that she-devil. Answer this letter, of course. Will you help me? I'll do anything for you. Did you answer the letter? Yes, in the Comte de Ward's name. I said, please forgive me for not taking advantage of your kind offer. I have had so many calls in my time, but I shall try to fit you in later. Oh. Thank you for the ring. I'm sure it will fetch a good price on the market. Mon Dieu. I went to see her that evening, last night. My head was quite cool. I thought I could confront her with her crimes. But I arrived and was soon under her spell again. You are looking pale, Lady de Winter. Is something the matter? Yes, Monsieur d'Artagnan, something is very much the matter. Is there anything I can do? Come and sit here. Close to me. There. You're an honest man. I could tell that at once in a world full of villains. What would you do for me? Did you ask? Well, only those in love can say that. Clarice. Well, I, I know you love me. I've seen it in your eyes. You dream of possessing me, don't you? Let me kiss you. Not yet. Proud hearts are hardest one. You must know that. I asked you a question. What would you do for me? Would you kill for me? You are tormenting me. I said anything. You'd risk your life for my love? Challenge a man who insulted me? It's done. But you don't know his name. Suppose it's one of your three friends. I... Kill all three for your love. But I know the name, the Comte de Ward. How do you know? Uh, I, I was with him this afternoon. He was boasting about you. He showed a ring and asked what we thought it would fetch. <laughs> Tremp. My God, your eyes. You'll kill him. You swear? On my honour as a gentleman. Oh. Atos. She was like a dove. She was all tenderness. It was dawn when I woke. I looked down on her sleeping face, my heart full of love. Then her eyes opened. Atos, those eyes were terrible. When will you kill him? Must we talk about that now? Yes, we made a bargain. I've kept my side of it. I gave you good value. Today, you'll kill him today. Clarice, I have a confession to Thank make. My God, if you cry off. Listen, the Comte de Ward is innocent. He insulted me. No one insults me and lives. He didn't get your letter. I answered it. You're lying. I wanted to punish you. I was jealous. Look, here's the ring. I, I turned it inward so you wouldn't recognize it. Clarice, my darling. Fiend. Fiend from hell. She leapt out of bed. I tried to pull her back. The sheet fell, revealing on her shoulder. A branded fleur de lis. God, how did you know? The mark of the criminal. Yes, the mark of the criminal. Fiend, now you know my secret. You must die! Suddenly there was a dagger in her hand. She lunged at me. Her face was demonic. My hand fell on my sword. I kept her at bay while I found the handle of the door to Kitty's room. Then I was through and held it tight fast as her dagger splintered through the wood. I was naked. Kitty gave me this robe. I escaped, ran out, and here I am. Atos, you're as pale as a ghost. It's because I've been back in hell, D'Artagnan. Let me see the ring. Here. God in heaven, it's the same. You know it? I know it. I must tell you a story now, D'Artagnan. You know I've always concealed my background. I was rich. When I was 25, a new priest came to live in the village. No one knew from where. He lived with his sister. She was 16 and as beautiful as the dawn. I fell in love. I was senior of my district. I could have taken her. Instead, I married her. I was insanely happy. She had only one idiosyncrasy. She would never let me see her naked. I humoured her. I loved her. She was, as you say, like a dove. One day we were out hunting. She fell, unconscious. Her bodice was tight. I cut it loose. And I saw on the shoulder of my dove, my innocent, the brand. The fleur de lis. I got it all out of her one way or the other. He was not her brother, but her lover. She seduced him, then they stole the communion, played from his church and ran off together. She was caught and branded. They met up again, looked about for an easy living and found me. He heard I was onto him and disappeared. And she? That night I took her into the woods, stripped her, tied her hands and hanged her from a tree. Mon Dieu. I left the district, changed my name. But she lived, D'Artagnan. There is the sapphire ring I gave her, the one my mother wore. The sorceress lives. If she ever sees you, 
We're both in peril now. Yes. Until that witch is really dead. Dead with a stake through her heart. From now on, you'll stay here. We'll go to your lodgings to pick up your things. Grimo, bring this lady a suit of clothes. I've been waiting for you, sir. The Cardinal's men have called. They left a letter. Thank you, Tonshi. Well, Atos, let's go and see what he says. And the lady's waiting inside for you. Lady? Yes, the lady. Stay outside, Atos. She doesn't have to know you're here. Very well. Only draw your sword. If she tries anything, forget she has the form of woman. Strike. Oh, sir. Thank God you've come. Kitty. Come in, Atos. This is my lady's maid. I told you about her. You can speak in front of him, Kitty. Good. Sir, she's gone mad. She's like a wild thing. She's guessed I helped you. She'll kill me if she finds me. I took some money and a few things and ran. What should she do, Atos? Your responsibility, D'Artagnan. If you could get me a post somewhere, anywhere out of Paris. Wait. Listen. Stand back, Kitty. Porthos! Aramis! A lady? Really? No, no, wait. Aramis, you're just the person I need. This is Kitty. Oh. She's in mortal danger on my account and needs somewhere to hide. She can't stay here. Atos wouldn't have her, and I wouldn't trust her with Portos. What? Aramis, I know you've accommodated one lady in the past. Oh. I was doing a favour for a friend. In any case, D'Artagnan, if she's in danger, I have a better idea. It happens that Madame de Chevreuse asked me to look out for a maid for a friend of hers in the country. I'll write a letter of introduction and the address, and she can leave at once. Oh, if you could, sir. Good. We've pen and paper. Planchet, yes, sir. Pen and paper. Write it now. Of course. Meanwhile, let's see what the cardinal has to say. Monsieur d'Artagnan, Desessart's company, King's Guards, is commanded to attend the cardinal at his palace at eight o'clock this evening. Don't go. I can't ignore a command. It'll shove you straight in the Bastille. Not if we prevent it. Portos, round up a dozen of our comrades. We'll accompany you to the palace and watch the entrances. If a guarded carriage comes out, we'll attack. Splendid! There, there's the letter and there's the address, my dear. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Monsieur D'Artagnan. Uh, would you fellows mind stepping outside for a moment? Gladly, of course. Oh, yeah, of course, sir. You know, I shall always love you, sir. And I shall always love you, Kitty. So let us kiss till better times, eh? Till better times. And so... He disposes of her as a gentleman and never sees her again. Eight o'clock. In the Cardinal's library, D'Artagnan stands waiting for the great man to deign to look up from his work. D'Artagnan. Yes, Your Eminence. I know all about you. How you were hoping to join the Musketeers, some of whom you've befriended. You made trouble outside the Carmelite convent when some of my guards were damaged. Your Eminence is well informed about me. Not only you, don't flatter yourself. You took a trip to England. I was To buy to... horses, yes. You were entertained by the First Minister of England and France's first enemy, the Duke of Buckingham. True? Yes. You return, not with horses, but with something else, which you gave to a lady of the highest position and were rewarded. I see you still wear the ring. Uh... Don't look so apprehensive. Should I punish you for serving your sovereign? You hoped for a reward of a different kind from another, shall I say, lady. But alas, she disappeared. You then engaged yourself with another. What a busy time you've had, Monsieur d'Artagnan. And come through it all unscathed, thanks to my leniency. You realise I could dispose of you at any time. Just a stroke of the pen, a word in an ear. Your eminence is too good. Not goodness, self-interest. That which makes the world go round. You're an intelligent man, a brave man, a man of spirit. A touch of youthful impetuosity, but that can be cured. You want to make your fortune. What do you say to entering my guards as an ensign with a captaincy after the campaign at La Rochelle? Nothing? I'm in His Majesty's guards, Monseigneur. Are you suggesting my guards are not also His Majesty's? I didn't mean that. You've made enemies, you know, D'Artagnan. And I can only protect my own people. I'm a busy man, so? I'm sorry, Monseigneur. As you wish. I shall be at La Rochelle. After the campaign, I'll repeat my offer. Should you survive, goodbye. Outside the Louvre, King Louis XIII, Louis the Just, reviews the troops prepared to die for him, or for something. Then the guards march off. At the Faubourg Saint-Antoine, D'Artagnan turns for an ironical salute to the Bastille and rides off to fight the English. Thus, he fails to notice a beautiful, fair-haired lady on a bay horse regarding him intently. Two sinister men are with her. She points, they look, nod, and follow the young Gascon. 
Milady smiles to herself, turns her horse, and starts back for Paris. For d'Artagnan, a far greater peril than the English awaits him. <laughs> In episode four of The Three Musketeers, Jamie Glover played D'Artagnan, Anton Lesser, Aramis, Timothy Spall, Portos, and Robert Glenister, Athos. Cardinal Richelieu, Julian Glover, Milady de Winter, Imelda Staunton, de Trevi, Malcolm Ward, Bonacieux, Norman Bird, Kitty, Rachel Atkins, Planchet, Dominic Letts, and Grimaud, Tom Bevan. The narrator was John Rowe. The Three Musketeers was dramatized by James Saunders and directed by Martin Jenkins. Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas, dramatized in six episodes by James Saunders. Episode 5, Treachery at La Rochelle. Last week, we left the young Gascon d'Artagnan marching to La Rochelle, where the Duke of Buckingham has landed an English army to assist the Protestant rebellion. In setting out to protect the French queen from the machinations of Cardinal Richelieu, D'Artagnan has thwarted the plans of the evil Milady, who is determined to exact revenge. Asked to undertake a dangerous mission to see if a certain bastion is still held by the enemy, D'Artagnan has unwisely selected two volunteers he does not know. Right then, gentlemen, follow me. We're about... Forty yards away from the bastion now. This is as far as we can get under cover. We shall be exposed till we reach that escarpment. Right, okay. That should be near enough to draw the enemy's fire and estimate their numbers. Are you game? Yes. Say the word. We'll follow. Ready then? Now! <laughs> Done it. Now, but where are the other... Cowards, they've stayed back in the ditch. Well, I'm as close as I can get. Now to find out if there's anyone in the bastion... Stand up and shout, that'll do it. Hello there! You Protestants! Traitors! Lovers of England! A dozen, at least. Well, that's all I need to know. Now to get back to those rascals in the ditch. Ready. Now! But as D'Artagnan runs back, two shots ring out. Two bullets whistle past him, coming from the ditch. Nothing for it but to get back before they reload. Into the ditch, he flings himself. Sword in hand, pierces one of the two in the thigh. The other swings his musket like a bludgeon as he leaps up from the ditch to escape and falls, dying a Rosalie bullet through the head. The other cries out, D'Artagnan's sword at his throat. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Why should I not, you blackguard? I'll tell you everything I know. What's your name? Brismore. So, Brismore, who put you up to murder me? My mate, him there. It wasn't nothing personal. Times are hard. He said there was a hundred Louis in it. Your mate's lying dead. Tell me who put him up to it. The lady. The one he called Milady. He's got a letter from her in his pocket. Milady. Now, let me see. <coughs> the money bag. Here's your pay. Catch. Ah. Uh. Here's the letter. You let the woman escape. Don't fail with the man. If you do, I swear you'll pay dearly. What woman did you let escape? Madame Bonacieux. She'd been put in prison by the cardinal, my mate said, and the queen got her out of it. She was on her way to a convent somewhere, and we were supposed to kidnap her, and we, we had a drink or two and missed the carriage. Which convent? I don't know. Lie to me and I'll kill you. I don't know anything else, I swear. All right. All right, I believe you. Now let's get back to camp. Lean on me. You're taking me back? Of course. Oh, to have me hanged? What good would that be to me? You won't try to kill me again. You've got your money already. Come along. Well done, D'Artagnan. The Duke d'Orléans will hear of this. Is, is that man wounded? Enemy thrust, Monsieur de Sassard. Nothing serious. Is it, Brismont? No, no, no. Thank you. Well done, both of you. Oh, D'Artagnan, here's a letter come for you. 
Well done. Thank you, sir. The plancher? Here I am, Monsieur de Dagnon. Yeah, I was just fixing myself up with another job, but I see I don't have to bother. No, oh, you scoundrel. Oh, plancher, this hero Brucemont has just said he'll serve me till death. So he'll be helping you look after me. Does that suit you, Brucemont? Mm. Oh, yes, thank you. Good. Go and get that wound dressed. Right. Wait here, plancher, while I read this letter. Monsieur d'Artagnan, your friends Athos, Porthos and Aramis spent an evening at my inn and were particularly taken by my Anjou wine. <laughs> they asked me to send you a dozen bottles to drink their health with, which I send. Planchet, is there a parcel for me? There is. What's that? An attack? Haven't you heard? The king's arrived with his musketeers. Here they come now. Splendid! Just in time! Planchet, lay on a feast for me and my friends. And see what you can pillage. Brismore will help you. They can help me drink this wine. When for? Now, this evening. Off you go. Sir. D'Artagnan! And there they are now. Athos, Porthos, Aramis, all for one. And, and one for all. all. And so the same evening, D'Artagnan leads his three friends towards his billet where Planchet and Brisemont are preparing the feast. I hope you're doing us proud. Yes. We've been a long time on the march. I think this will satisfy even you, Porthos. Oh, ho, ho. And a tolerable wine, I trust? It should be. It's your wine. Our wine? Don't play tricks, Aramis. The innkeeper sent a letter. What innkeeper? What letter? Have you got this letter? Here. Monsieur d'Artagnan, your friend Porthos Aramis spent an evening at... You know about this, Porthos? No. Aramis? Nothing to do with me. Nor me. So who sent the wine? Can't you guess? Good God. To my billet. Quickly. Brismont, serve you till death. That's a joke. You pretend to save my life, and then you poison it, Brismont. Oh, I swear. Make you rot in the hell. To be cursed by a dying man. Horrible. Porto, smash all those bottles. Oh, Gladly. Are you all right? You look as white as a sheet. I feel as white as a sheet. So what happened? We were only going to make sure the wine was fit to drink. I gave him the bottle first to be polite, only when he let out a yell and fell down, I thought I wouldn't try it. That'll teach you not to steal wine, you rogue. Yes, that'll teach you. <laughs> it will, too. Go fetch a priest, Planchet. See, he's buried in consecrated ground. <clears throat> and no word of this to anyone. Uh, I'm going to forget it. Don't you worry. Well, gentlemen, you've saved my life again. I thought we'd be safe from her here. We'll be safe nowhere while that woman lives. What woman? Who are we fighting, for God's sake? A devil, Portos. Oh, dear. A witch in the guise of a beautiful woman. What? I'll tell you everything soon. Meanwhile, watch your step, gentlemen. Don't touch that food, Portos. Uh -huh. Watch what you eat, what you drink. Never go out alone. And Aramis, you'd better pray for us. A few days after this, the English launch an attack on the mainland from their bridgehead on the Ile de Ré. The king orders a counter-attack. The English retreat, and in a final decisive engagement, are beaten back to their ships. Time is on our side, Your Majesty. They're not attack again for a while. You see, victory is ours. Oh, and incidentally, we captured Montague, Buckingham's envoy during the rout, with certain papers. What papers? Evidence of a secret league aimed against France. What league? England, of course, Spain, Austria, Madame de Chevreuse is implicated. That damned woman. That damned woman. Friend of your queen, Spanish Anne of Austria, the Duke of Buckingham's confidant. Richelieu. These are facts. I put no interpretation on them. You realise that as First Minister of France... Under your majesty. ...you'll be held responsible if the news of this league gets out. Not me. You. My future is at stake, yes. I realise that. As bodyguard to the king, his musketeers occupy a privileged position behind the battle lines. So it is that one night, D'Artagnan being on duty, we find Athos, Porthos and Aramis together in the back parlour of the Red Dovecot Inn, a few miles out of camp, ostensibly waiting for the rain to stop. I win again. Oh, it's the weather. I never win when it's raining. Rotten excuse, Porthos. It stopped half an hour ago. <clears throat> the moon's out. I suggest we head back to camp. I have a passage of Aquinas to study before I turn in. Hello. Who's this? What? 
Very late arrival. See, out there, two horses. Looks like an officer with his groom. And coming in by the back door... A spy? Open our door a crack, Portos. Yes, I can see from here. Ah, it's you, monsieur. Mon Dieu. Is the lady here? Upstairs, monsieur. This way. Oh, ho! Oh. Don't be a fool, Portos. It's the carter. The carter? What the devil is he doing here so late? He's obviously human, like the rest of us. <laughs> Listen. We can hear down the pipes of the stove. It's of vital importance that you carry out my instructions to the letter. Do you understand, my lady? Tell me what I am to do. My God, it's her. Wait until I leave, then go downstairs. There are men waiting. They will take you to the coast. You'll cross to England. Everything is arranged. Buckingham is at Dover. You will ask to see him. He'll refuse. He doesn't trust me since the diamond tags business. You are going as an official agent of France. He'll see you. Tell Buckingham we have a letter from Madame Chevreuse proving the Queen's part in plotting with the King's enemies. Tell him that if his plans for an alliance with Spain and Austria go forward, all this will be published. Can you remember that? My memory is perfect, Monseigneur. What if he refuses to give way? He's besotted. If continuing the war means the Queen's dishonour, he'll stop the war. And if he doesn't? Then he must be removed from the action. I understand it'll be a pleasure. When you return to France, I want an immediate report. You will then go to the Carmelite convent in Bethune. The abbess will expect you and await further orders. Have you anything to ask? One thing. Monseigneur, if I am to deal with your enemy, I should also like protection to enable me to deal with mine. More protection than the name Clarice de Winter gives me. What enemy are you talking about? First, a little schemer named Constance Bonacieux. Oh, the woman's in prison. She was the Queen. Queen had secured her release. She's taken refuge in a convent. Which one? I'll deal with her. I don't know yet. I'll find out, but she's small fry. My main enemy is her lover. Who? The man who helped the King's Musketeers defeat your guards in brawls. The man who thwarted me in the Diamond Tags affair. D'Artagnan, a brave young man. All the more dangerous to both of us. Monseigneur, deal with my enemy, and I'll deal with yours. Very well. Send me proofs of his dealings with Buckingham, and I'll send him to the Bastille for treason. And after that? For those in the Bastille, there's no after that. As for protection, I'd already thought of that. Here, this order will protect you, at least in this country. So, that's all. I rely on you, milady. What is it, Atos? You're as white as a sheet. Shh. He's coming down. Now she's alone. Is this the woman we are to beware of? The same. Listen, I'm going up to her room. Stay here. If I cry out, come up. If you find me dead, kill her. me now. I see you do. I thought you dead. I thought you dead. But by God, I can make sure this time. Don't! You were sent by the devil to torture men. I send you back to him. Oh, wait! Think of the day you first saw me. Think of the young woman you married. Think of your wedding night. Will you kill her too? In cold blood? Damn you! You are not that woman. I am. You see, I am. You're right. I can't kill you in cold blood, not even knowing your crimes. What crimes? You've heard lies. You know nothing about me. Nothing? The diamond tags, the kidnapping of Madame Bonacieux, your night of love with D'Artagnan as payment for his promise to kill your lover, your attempt to murder D'Artagnan by bullet and by poison, your commission to murder the Duke of Buckingham in exchange for authority to kill your own enemies. How do you know all this? You must be the devil. Yes. And I swear by the devil that if you make any further attempt to harm D'Artagnan, I shall find you and by the devil kill you. Now, you have an order from the Cardinal giving you carte blanche to kill. Where is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Hand me the Cardinal's order or by God I'll blow your brains out. Here, take it and may you be cursed to all eternity. Now I've drawn your viper's fangs. Strike if you dare. And I shall, Atos. Make no mistake. You've signed your death warrant, but all in good time. First Buckingham, then D'Artagnan, then you and your friends. All of you. Meanwhile, at La Rochelle, D'Artagnan has helped to capture a bastion. The following morning, he joins Athos, Porthos, and Aramis to enjoy a quiet breakfast at a peaceful inn, during which Athos is to tell them about his wife. But he is interrupted by the arrival of four boisterous soldiers. Suddenly, Athos makes a wager with them. The musketeers will eat their breakfast in the bastion before the enemy try to reoccupy it, stay there one hour, and, if they succeed, 
The soldiers will buy them a first-class meal. Atos, I don't like to criticize, but when he put us up for target practice, I wish he'd ask our opinion first. Nonsense. We'll be safer in the Bastion than anywhere. It's not the enemy's bullets we have to fear, and we're safer to have our talk. I don't care where we go as long as breakfast goes with us, which at the moment it isn't. Atos, your servant appears to have gone on strike. Hmm. Grimo, bring the basket. He sat down. You can't blame him, Atos. For disobeying me. Grimo, if it's your skin you're worried about, worry about it more when I get back to take it off. He's coming. <laughs> His eyes shut. Ah. They've woken up at last. No danger, we're concealed by the Basti. Grimo's not. They're too far away to hit him. That's not his opinion. Look, he's dropped the basket and he's running. My breakfast! Grimo! He stopped. Basket, now! He's bemused. He looks like a fox with two packs of hounds on him. Fetch! My God, he's gone to fetch it. He's more scared of you than them. So he should be. Stop running, you idiot! You're shaking my shampoo! Well done, Grimo. Thank you, sir. Don't praise him, he'll get above himself. So, in we go. Oh, yes. A splendid spot for a conference. <laughs> Only the dead, and they're not listening. Clear them out of the way, Grimaud. Yes, sir. And then lay out the meal. Yes, sir. And while we're collecting their muskets and loading them, I'll tell you all about the woman they call... Milady. So, that's the whole story. Oh, now God. you know what devils we are dealing with. Breakfast, gentlemen. Good. Keep watch, Grimaud, while we eat. Here, take a couple of cutlets and a bottle of wine. You see how I look after you? Thank you, sir. So, gentlemen. Oh, the damn rogue. What is it? The landlord's foisted us off with Anjou instead of champagne. Oh. Never mind, I'll thrash him when we get back. The question is, what can we do to thwart the plans of the Cardinal and that woman? She'll kill me, Atos, and if she doesn't, the Cardinal will. I may as well blow my brains out now. Enemy coming! How many? Uh, five soldiers uh, and sixteen pioneers. They've come to repair the damage you did last night, D'Artagnan. Sing out when they're in firing range. My word, this chicken's good. Maybe I shan't thrash the landlord after all. What was in the paper you got from the lady? Read it. It is by my order and for the benefit of the state that the bearer of this note has done what has been done. Cardinal Richelieu. <sighs> Cut Blanche. Destroy it. No. No, it could be useful. They're in firing range, monsieur. I hate having my breakfast interrupted. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> You can't shoot the pioneers, they're civilians. They're Protestant heretics, aren't they? What kind of priest are you going to make if you talk like that? I'll give them a chance. Hey, you! Gentlemen! Don't show yourself, they'll shoot. Where I'm having breakfast. You can have your bastion back in half an hour. The soldiers are taking aim. Or better still, you can change sides and we'll drink the king's health together. What do you say? <laughs> uh... That's what they say. You can't reason with some people. Muskets, gentlemen. Fire. More muskets, Grimo. Yes, sir. They're making off. What'll be bad, Grimmer? Uh, three soldiers, one sergeant, two pioneers. Good. <laughs> Reload while we finish our breakfast. <laughs> now, where were we? Why don't I, um, cut me another quarter of chicken out of us as a good chap? Why don't I take leave of absence? You fellows can think up some excuse for me, then I find the lady and strangle her. As you should have done, Atos. The Cardinal would know at once if any of us left camp. You wouldn't get two miles, Portos. D'Artagnan, mm. didn't you say you know my lady's brother in law? Lord de Winter, yes, but there's no love lost between them. And he left for England when the war started. All the better. Listen, I've got a plan. Let me <laughs> coming again. Damn the fellows. How many this time? Uh, uh, I can't count that high. Let them come. You were saying, Aramis. As I see it, we have two objectives. To neutralise Milady and to let the Queen know she's in danger. And at the same time, perhaps, to find out the whereabouts of Madame Bonacieux. Yes. So, why don't we send one of our servants to England with a letter to Lord de Winter, warning him of Milady's plans? If he dislikes her as much as you say, D'Artagnan, with any luck he'll lock her out of harm's way. Communicating with the enemy sounds like treason to me. So it's treason. Who's to take the letter? My planchet, of course. He's a good man and he knows the journey. Then that's settled. I also propose we send a second message. Enemy in range! They've sent the regiment. Have more muskets ready, Grimo. Yes, sir. Pick your man. Fire. Change muskets. Fire. Change muskets. Fire. They're still coming, and we've run out of loaded muskets. I thought of that. Do you see this section of the parapet? It's loose. It only needs a good push. They're in the moat. Gentlemen. One, two, three. <laughs> this time. Our 
tower's nearly up. Meanwhile, we've no parapet to take cover behind. We'll be gone by the time they come again. One last trick. Grimo, line up these bodies pointing at the enemy. Give them a musket each and, um, put their hats on. Yes, monsieur. <laughs> line up the bodies with their hats on. You hope they'll come to life when they see the enemy? They will for the enemy, you'll see. Now we can finish off the wild. Aramis, you said something about another message. Yes, we sent a message to the Queen, telling her of the danger she's in, and asking for the whereabouts of your draper's wife. No good. It will be intercepted. The court's full of spies and with no connections. Ah, well, you see, as to that, I, I happen to know of someone who, uh, who knows someone. Aramis, you're blushing. Madame de Chevreuse, of course. Whoever it is, it's a good plan. You can write the letter, Aramis. You're the scholar. I was going to suggest that. And my fellow Basin must take it. He's known to my, uh, to my friend. Good. It seems to me that's all we can do just now. Are those corpses in place, Grimo? All done, with their hats on large as life. Oh, my God! There's a whole army coming this time! Look! Yes, they are, too. We'd best make a run for it. Let our comrades see us running? Never. Take the basket, Grimo, and don't drop it this time. You can run. It's the best news I've had today. I'm off. We'll follow at our leisure, as if out for a morning stroll. So they can pick us off at their leisure? Not at all. They'll fire at our decoy bodies for a while. But the bodies won't fire back. Exactly. They'll suspect an ambush, have a palaver. By the time they twig, we'll be out of range. Well done, Natos. Come along. There they go. So, gentlemen... We've had a good breakfast, a successful conference with no eavesdroppers. We've distinguished ourselves against the enemy, and we've, we've won, won a free meal. meal. What more can you ask? Was there ever such a foursome as us? One for all and all for one. <sighs> all for one and one for all. D'Artagnan. Monsieur de Trevi. I hear you and your friends are getting a free supper tonight. Is that where you're off to? Yes, monsieur. That was a damn silly exploit you engaged in this morning, putting the lives of three of the King's musketeers at risk, plus your own for what it's worth. Yes, monsieur. Anyway, that's my opinion of your damn fool tricks. I've been asked to inform you that from tomorrow you're no longer to wear the uniform of Monsieur des Essars' guards. I'm no longer to... Instead, you'll kid yourself out as a King's musketeer. A uh, uh, musketeer? I I'm a musketeer, Monsieur de Treville. Don't blame me for it. It's none of my doing. As a matter of fact... It was the Cardinal's wish. The Cardinal? Perhaps he thinks he can keep a closer eye on you together. Off you go, then. Musketeer d'Artagnan? Yes, monsieur. Thank you, monsieur. Enjoy your meal. And don't get into any brawls. That night, while the four musketeers carouse till one by one they slump insensibly onto their plates or slide to the floor, two men ride doggedly through the night rain. Bazin a letter to the Queen of France in his grubby pocket, and Planchet, bound for England and Lord de Winter. He has been told that if Milady beats him to Portsmouth, he need not come back. There, madame. Safe on shore. Thank you. This way, madame. One moment. Who are you, sir? As you see, a British naval officer. Bring a light, Tompkin. Sir? Lieutenant Felton, madame, at your service. What do you want? Foreign nationals are required to obtain an entry visa on their arrival. But I am not a foreign national. My name is Lady de Winter, the widow Then of... it'll be purely a formality. Load the lady's luggage, Tompkins. Sir? But this is most inconvenient. War makes many inconveniences. The carriage is this way. May I take your little bag? How much further is it? Where are we going? I asked you a question. We're outside the town. Where, where are you taking... I demand that you stop the carriage. I have to carry out my orders. Please don't cause a scene. It'll do you no good. And if you're looking for the dagger I'm told you carry, I must tell you I have a pistol. Just tell me who gave you these orders. This is your room. The windows are... It's a prison cell. Who is holding me here? I demand to know. Welcome to England, my dear. To winter? Yes, Clarice, your brother-in-law. Aren't you glad to see me? I won't claim a sisterly kiss. Thank you, Mr. Felton. I shan't need you for the present. Sir. May I know what this is about? Is it a joke? No joke. I'm keeping you here. Against my will. That depends on your will, my dear. I advise you to accept a situation from which there is no escape. I must tell you, I'm in England on official business. If you don't... Oh, I know your business. 
Buckingham is in Portsmouth, is he not? I know everything about you. I know your history. I know whom you loved and whom you hate and would see dead. I know your plans. I know of your marriage. To your brother? To a man you took for his position before you bigamously took my brother for his money. And then probably killed him. This is nonsense. You can't believe all this. No. How can I? With a face as beautiful as that. How can I? I must be mad. Only do one thing for me, my dear. Show me there is no mark on your left shoulder. You won't? I refuse to be interrogated. Who told you these lies about me? Now, Monsieur Planchet gave me a letter. I know nobody called Planchet. You know his master, Monsieur d'Artagnan. <sighs> if you could see yourself, my dear, that such an angelic face can become suddenly so evil. What are you planning to do with me? You will be put on a ship for Botany Bay. <laughs> if you try to escape, your guards have orders to shoot you. Dead. I told Buckingham everything. He'll sign the necessary papers. <laughs> Meanwhile, Felton will look after you. I see your eyes light up. No, my dear, I know your tricks, but your wiles won't work on him. I've armed him against you. He is as impregnable as this castle. Accept your fate, Clarice, and try to pray for forgiveness. Thank you, Felton. Sir? Submissive, I must charm, he must pity me. A week. Impregnable? No man is impregnable to me. Come, Lieutenant Felton, let's see how strong your armour is. Then beware, Buckingham, beware, Athos, as you call yourself, and above all, beware, D'Artagnan. For I mean to kill you all. At this very moment in the French camp at La Rochelle, a strange thing happens. For the four musketeers, another day's duty is over. Soon they expect news of their messengers, Bazin and Planchet. They sit at table and raise their glasses to success. To the four musketeers, one for all and all for one. All for one and one. And as they do so, all four are taken by a sudden involuntary shudder, as if the angel of death had passed overhead. In episode five of The Three Musketeers, Jamie Glover played D'Artagnan, Anton Lesser Aramis, Timothy Spall Portos, and Robert Glenister Atos. Cardinal Richelieu, Julian Glover, Milady de Winter, Imelda Staunton, the King, Nicholas Bolton, de Trevi, Malcolm Ward, Planchet, Dominic Letts, Grimaud, Tom Bevan, Brisemont, Nicholas Murchie, Lord de Winter, Gareth Armstrong, Felton, Lyndon Gregory, Des Essars, David Jarvis, and the soldier, Peter Kenny. The narrator was John Rowe. The Three Musketeers was dramatized by James Saunders and directed by Martin Jenkins. Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas, dramatized in six episodes by James Saunders. Episode 6, Nemesis. Milady, the most evil woman in France, sent by her master, Cardinal Richelieu, to dispose of the Duke of Buckingham, knows that her only hope of escape from prison in Portsmouth lies in seducing the young Lieutenant Felton. Meanwhile, our four musketeers, for D'Artagnan is now one of them, wait at the French camp at La Rochelle for news of the whereabouts of Constance Bonacieux, and also whether the Queen has received the message informing her of the danger to her beloved Buckingham. Away from the prying eyes of the Cardinal in a deserted church, Aramis reads them a letter. My dear cousin, my sister is grateful for your solicitude regarding her health, 
and is taking measures to avoid infection. What does this health got to do with it? The Queen, you idiot. It's in code. Aha. Uh -huh. Go on, Aramis. As to her servant girl in the Carmelite convent in Bethune, she agrees that you may remove her for her own safety. Then there is some other stuff I don't have to read. Uh -huh. The convent at Bethune. Mon Dieu. That's where the Cardinal told my lady to wait when she returns from England. If she returns. If Lord de Winter has had our message. If, if. There's been no word from Planchet. Anything could have happened. If my lady reaches Bethune before we do, my beloved Constance will be in terrible danger. I must go there at once. I must save her. D'Artagnan, listen. Expecting the worst does nobody any good. The King's bored with La Rochelle. He's going back to Paris. It's only a matter of days. And we shall go with him. And then... If the Cardinal lets us live that long... Maybe he will and maybe he won't. Life's a trivial thing. Speak for yourself, Atos. But if you value it so highly, I suggest we waste no more time here but get back to the relative safety of the camp. Agreed. I'm feeling peckish. Let's go, then. Hola! Hola! What the hell are you shouting about, Grimaud? Do you want a thrashing? Hello! It's Planchet. Look! Planchet, where the devil have you been, you scoundrel? Where have I been, he asks. Only to England and back, hobnobbing with dukes, sleeping in ditches, dodging spies, fighting ruffians out to kill me. Nowhere, nowhere. Here's a letter. Give me it. Yes, it's from Lord de Winter. What does it say? Four words only. Thank you. Rest easy. So we're safe from her, at least. We shall be safe from her, Portos, only when she's in her grave. We'd better destroy these letters before we go back. The Cardinal might take it into his head to put us all in irons. True. And so they return to camp a little easier in their minds, knowing nothing of the drama which has been playing itself out across the channel. Portsmouth Harbour, early morning. As troops march down to the ships to embark for France and war, a young naval officer is being rowed ashore from a sloop which lies at anchor. He looks back. His eyes are fixed on the figure of a fair-haired woman who stands on deck watching him. Stepping ashore, he makes for the Admiralty. He is shown into a room. A figure rises from a desk. The Duke of Buckingham, England's most powerful man, commander of her forces and lover of the French Queen. Lieutenant Felton, isn't it? Yes, Your Grace. I expected Lord de Winter to see me in person. I have come in his stead. Very yeah, well. You have a paper for me to sign, I believe? Yes, Your Grace. For the deportation of a woman. I have it here. Yes. That seems in order, my moment. Before you sign it, Your Grace. Yes? Yeah. Do you know that the name on the order is a false one? Of course. And do you know her true identity? Well, of course I know. Later to winter. And you will still sign her into oblivion? I don't understand your questions, Felton. After ruining her once, your conscience will allow you to ruin her again? Felton, this is intolerable. Stay where you are. Don't touch that bell. My God, you're out of your mind. You dare threaten me? I dare aim it at your heart, such as it is. And how many others in England would be glad to be in my place? Yes, and glad to pull the trigger. The whole of England knows the Duke of Buckingham. Your excess is your arrogance. I know more. I know a particular case. A lady as pure as the angels, whom you held captive and ruined. And having ruined her, you pervert justice to be shot of her. You fooled my friend and patron, Lord de Winter, with your lies. But I'm not to be fooled. She has told me everything. I know her. She is an angel. She is... Excuse me, Your Grace. An important letter from France. There's a madman here, Patrick. Call my guard. No, damn you. Go to hell where you belong. <laughs> Mona! The Duke has been shot! Oh, oh my God! Oh, dear. I rushed here as soon as I found she was gone. It seems I'm too late. God, hold that man. Sir, yes, sir. Why did you leave him with her, de Winter? Do you not yet know her? I know her now. Are you badly hurt? Call for a doctor. No, I don't bother with a doctor. I'm dying. Quickly. There's a letter from France. Now read it to me, de Winter. Yeah, my lord. It's from the Queen. Read it. Read it. Take him outside. Patrick, you stay. Sir. Your, Your Grace. Grace. If you care for my happiness, stop this war. It will bring great misery. I need no proof of your love, as you need no proof of mine. The day will come when we are no longer forced to be enemies. Till then, take care. Your life is in danger. I dream of you lying in a pool of blood. Take care. Until better times, your affectionate Anne. Uh, in there, there's a rosewood up the window. That is my shrine to her. Do you see it? Yes, here. Here. It contained her diamond tags. Now, inside are letters from her. 
send it to her as a token of my love. Ah, your grace. He's gone. Holy mother of God. Bring in Felton. Yes, sir. Felton, do you know what you've done? This man was England. I know what he was. Lady de Winter told me what he was. And you believed her, you fool. How could one not believe her? I never met such a saintly woman. And she leaves you to die for her? I do, gladly. Though it wasn't her intention. Poor woman. She's out there now waiting for me. Don't try to stop her. I ordered her to sail if she sees danger. You ordered her? Look through the window. Well? Her ship's gone. It set sail. There must be some mistake. Your mistake, you poor fool. Take him away. On the same day, just as the musketeers learn that they are to accompany the bored king back to Paris, a letter arrives for D'Artagnan. She has escaped. Beware. I must tell you, Lady de Winter, we live in the utmost simplicity. You may be bored here. On the contrary, Reverend Mother, this is a most restful garden. Oh, you don't know how I've longed for peace such as this. Free from the court and its intrigues. Oh, but I must take care of what I say. Nothing passes out of the convent walls. But perhaps you take the cardinal's side? I take no one's side but God's. As for the cardinal, I've heard tales. But I should be the one to take care, I think. You come here on the cardinal's recommendation. To keep me here till he sends his agents for me? Then why did you come? Well, where else? His spies would find me wherever I hid. I see. So there are two victims here of his oppression. You have another? A young woman. She's here on the Queen's recommendation for her protection from that man. Her name? I'm supposed not to say, but since you are in a similar position, I shall tell you. Her name is Bonacieux, Constance Bonacieux. Ah, oh. you know her? Then you must meet her. This way. Of course I know your situation, my dear. I have the Queen's ear to my misfortune. Oh. Have I heard of you? Don't ask my name, it's safer for you. But do you know of the danger I'm in? Oh, yes, yes, and I must think of some way of helping you. Oh, thank you. But that's not necessary. Help is at hand. How? Oh, I've had a letter. Oh, perhaps I should not show it, but I feel I can trust you. Here, I carry it always with me. Oh, near your heart. Oh, yes. May I read it? Yes, of course. You see... They had come for me. He and his friends with an order of release from the Queen. They should be here at any time. D'Artagnan. Oh, do you know him? Uh, yes. Huh. Oh, yes. Uh, wait, let me think. Uh, yes, I know his writing. The Queen showed me a letter from him. This is a good copy. Well, what do you mean? Don't you know he and his friends are at La Rochelle until the war ends? But he says in the letter... They say... I don't yes. understand. My poor child, can't you see this is a forgery? <gasps> oh, my God. Are you sure? How do you know? Oh, come in. I'm sorry, but a cardinal's man is asking to see you, Lady de Winter. Oh. There, now you know my name. Does it mean anything to you? No. Then forget you ever heard it. How many are down there, Reverend Mother? Just one man and his servant. Well, if they'd come to take me, they'd bring a party of soldiers. Don't be afraid, Constance, my dear. I shall be back. Now, <laughs> wait here. If you lead the way, Reverend Mother? Yes, of course. Rochefort, it's you! I've come straight from La Rochelle. <gasps> the Cardinal was worried that he had no word from you. The English have a total blockade. No news can get in or out. I sent him a letter. I was held up for over a week. Why? What happened? That doesn't matter. Enough to say I fulfilled my mission. Buckingham is dead. Now, listen. I have other news. The Bonacieux woman is here. In the convent? Yes, but possibly not for long. She's heard from D'Artagnan. He says he's on his way here to release her on the Queen's order. Of course. The musketeers have now returned to Paris with the King. Oh, so it's true. If they find me here, they'll kill me. But the Cardinal will be furious if we let the Bonacieux woman escape again. She won't. I have a plan. Listen, have you a carriage? Yes, I came by post chaise. Good. Leave it for me. You can ride back. Five hundred miles? Yes. Now, when I leave, you tell the abbess she is to release me to your driver in one hour. Show her your authority. Paint a black picture of me. I'm supposed to be your enemy. Yes. Your driver must return in one hour. Do you understand? Yes, yes. But where shall I find you again? There's a little town on the River Lees, close to the border. You'll find me there. Go now. My respects to the cardinal. And mine to the devil. Goodbye. I told 
you I would be. I couldn't explain in front of the abbess. Explain what? Let me close the door. The man who called, he is not the cardinal's man. He is my brother. Your brother? Lord de Winter. He has come to rescue me and you, oh. if you will. Listen, it may be that your lover D'Artagnan did send that letter. Oh. He may be on his way at this moment. But coming here, my brother came upon a party of men dressed as musketeers. He said they looked like ruffians. He challenged them, they blustered, he drew his sword, and they ran away. Do your musketeers run away? Never. Oh, merciful heavens, what am I to do? This is my plan. In an hour, my brother's chaise will call here to collect me with a forged order for my release to him. Come to the chaise to see me off, stand on the step as if to kiss me Good goodbye. Man. When my brother's servant sees this, he'll signal to the coachman to whip up the horses and we both escape. To where? Armentier. I was born there. I know the area we can lie low. But what if D'Artagnan comes while I'm away? My brother's servant will come back and watch for him. He knows D'Artagnan. He's seen him at my house. Do you agree? Oh, I, I don't know. So much intrigue. My mind is swimming. Trust me. Oh, I must. Yes, you must. I'll leave you now. Collect a few things and come to my room. Oh, you're looking pale. You must eat and drink before the journey. Oh, yes. Oh, Lady de Winter, I'm so frightened. Put your arms around oh, there. There, there, there. Everything will go as it should. <laughs> come as soon as you can, my dear. Lady de Winter stands at the window of her room, reviewing the plans on which her future, her life, depend. The eyes that have conquered so many men are fixed on the road to Bethune. The hands, so skilled in love and death, clench and unclench. Oh, the taste of revenge, so sweet in my mouth, like love, better, better than love. D'Artagnan, D'Artagnan. Meanwhile... Eight tired men dismount from their exhausted horses at the inn of the Golden Key in Bethune. We can't use those horses again today. I suggest we ride up there in the morning. It'll be dark soon anyway. Agree, I can do it a good deal. I don't like to wait. Now that we're so near the convent... You keep. I always keep, eh? Um... If she's safe now, she'll be safe till morning. I don't agree. Milady is a creature of the night. May I get you some wine, gentlemen? Yes, love. Yeah, yeah, your finest. Nothing but the finest. I say, that fellow's in a hurry. Good God. D'Artagnan, what is it? You've gone as white as a sheet. Didn't you see his face? The scar? It's my evil genius, my man from Merng. Landlord, my horse. Don't be a fool, D'Artagnan. He can wait. Landlord, which way is the Carmelite convent? You're up the road there, about a mile. You'll see it. If your man has come from there, then it's the convent we must go to. Landlord, has anyone else asked for it recently? Well, the gentleman who just left, and before him a lady. What lady? Well, I don't know what lady. She didn't stay. Beautiful. Fair head. God, it's her. We want four fresh horses. Have you got them? Yes, but aren't you going to stay there? Don't argue, man. Bring them. Here. Here's money. Hurry! Hurry! These are all the things I need. Good. I'll pretend they're mine. Sit down and eat. You look pale. I shall keep watch from the window. I think I may faint. You must not courage. The end is near. Trust me. Yes, I must be courageous. How good you are to me. What is it? Something approaching. Horses. Oh, Lord in heaven. Who's... Oh, damnation, damnation. Not the cardinal's man. Yes. Then we're both lost. No. Quickly, come with me down the back stairs and into the gardens. We can hide in the woods. Quickly. Oh, I've faked my legs. I'll take you in my arm. Come. Oh, it's no use. Leave me. Save yourself. They're coming. Oh, damn you. You'll not escape me, Constance Bonacieux. She turns away. Slips a ruby ring from her finger. Removes it still. Here. Drink this wine. Thank you. Your eyes. Drink. Drink. There. You'll feel better now. Adieu, Madame Bonacieux. As she poured it. Yes, she... Oh, I think I'm dying. No, Constance. Doctor, 
Fetch a doctor. Useless, D'Artagnan. Her poison has no remedy, poor soul. What is happening here? The lady rushed past me on the stairs. Her eyes were terrifying. Who are you people? What are you doing here? What's the matter with Madame Bonacieux? The matter is she's dying, madam. So why don't you save your breath to pray for her? Constance, my love. Hold me. Oh, God have mercy on me. Madame Bonacieux, listen. Where is she going? For the love of God, do you know where she's going? Tell me. She was taking... She said... Oh, my dear. Constance. Constance. It's no use. She's gone. <laughs> Lady de Winter, I swear by heaven and hell that I shall find you and send you back where you belong. Come, D'Artagnan. Women mourn, men avenge. Yes. Men avenge. Come then. Leave her now. She'll be here when you come back to put flowers on her grave. Weep then. For now we have something else to do. On arrival at Armentier, the four servants wander the streets searching out news of a beautiful fair-haired lady, whilst Athos scours the district on a different quest. Many know of the man he seeks, but none will direct him, until a beggar, on the promise of a gold coin, leads him into the woods, points to a lonely cottage, takes the coin, crosses himself, and disappears in terror. Athos, too, as he knocks on the cottage door, crosses himself. Meanwhile, the servants have discovered the whereabouts of the beautiful fair-haired lady and have told Porthos, Aramis and D'Artagnan, who now await the return of Athos. You found her. Where is she? I was in the woods, Monsieur Athos. Yes, she likes woods and darkness. Well, it's dark now. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. Bear with me. Someone else is joining us. Who? You'll see soon enough. He's here. Come in, Monsieur. Heaven preserve us. A tall, gaunt figure. His body concealed beneath a red cloak, hat pulled well down, but not enough to hide the mask and the eyes glittering behind it. Now we can go. There's the cottage. Grima, here. No, she... Is she there, Grima? She's there, Monsieur Athos. There's a window up there with a the light. Wait by her door till I call you. Yes. Good. I can climb this tree to the window. In the room, a woman sits, deep in thought, her face contorted. She hears a sound and looks towards the window. Who's there? Nemesis! Atos! Atos! She runs to the door, throws it open. D'Artagnan! Yes, murderess. Lower your pistol, D'Artagnan. She must be tried by all of us. Come in, the rest of you. What are you going to do to me? Nothing but what you deserve. Are we all gathered? Then let us begin. D'Artagnan, how do you charge her? Lady de Winter, before God and men, I charge you with inciting me to murder the Comte de Ward. I charge you with attempts to murder me by the bullet and by poison. I charge you with poison. With poisoning Constance Bonacieux. And I, before God and men, charge you, Comtesse de la Fere, with taking my name by deception for my property and my position, while concealing the brand of the criminal on your left shoulder. There! <laughs> Just. It was just. Who are you? Who is this man? Without the mask, you know me. There, do you know me now? No. It can't be. The headsman of Lille. The same. And de Bray, before God and men, I charge you with the following. You were a nun in the convent of Temple Mar. There you seduced a young priest, an innocent, persuaded him to steal the communion plate and escaped with him. You were both caught, and you seduced the jailer's son and escaped. The young priest was sentenced to ten years and a branding. As headsman, I had to brand him. I had to brand my own brother. That same night he hanged himself in his cell. I spent a year looking for you. When I found you, I bound your hands and feet and branded you with the same iron. Thus I charge you. What punishment do you demand? Death. 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 No, you can't. <clears throat> I appeal to you. D'Artagnan, I appeal to you. Remember our hours of love. I... Remember. 
Lady de Winter. D'Artagnan, a step nearer the lady, and by God, I shall shoot you. Headsman, do your duty. Midnight. The moon in its last quarter rises above the river Lys, reddened by the recent storm. The headsman rows to the far bank with his charge. The others watch as he has her kneel, raises his broadsword. No! Have pity! Listen! I'll give you... I'll give you... The headsman rows back. In the middle of the river he stops, raises a bundle wrapped in a red cloak above the water. I deliver you in God's justice. May his will be done. Very well, D'Artagnan. I'll tell you why I've had you arrested. You are charged with crimes which have cost many better men than you their heads. May I know them, Your Eminence? Plotting with enemies of the state, intercepting state documents, attempting to subvert the work of agents of the state. May I ask who will supply the evidence? It will be supplied. I think not, Monseigneur. The lady is dead. What? Lady de Winter is dead. I condemned her, watched her die for her crimes. Good God, man, what are you saying? If I tell you the whole story, your eminence will know the kind of person on whose evidence you wish to condemn me. May I? Go on. Lady de Winter, a title bigamously earned, incidentally, was once and a broy. And so ended her infamous life. I see you cross yourself, Monseigneur. Yes. Even so, you'll have to stand trial. So be it. I'm older than when we first met, Monseigneur. I'm no longer so attached to life that I shall mourn its passing. Though I could say I have my official pardon in my pocket. What do you mean? This. Please read it, Monseigneur. It is by my order and for the good of the state that the bearer has done what has been done, Cardinal Richelieu. <laughs> I wrote it, I destroy it. So be it. In exchange, I have another piece of paper. Here, read it. I don't understand. Come, you can read. A lieutenant's commission in the musketeers. Your eminence, I'm, I'm not worth it. That's for me to judge, but I've left the name blank. If you don't want it, give it to someone else, that's all. Thank you, Monseigneur. Uh, wait. Uh, a, a piece of advice before you go. You're a young man, D'Artagnan, and you're a romantic. Well, the two go together, but let me put something before you. In spite of your romantic meddling, Buckingham is dead, which means this country is at peace. The Queen you so revere, Spanish Anne, will forget him soon enough, I assure you. She and the King will become one, not in your romantic way, but as a King and Queen must, for the good of their country. From now on, they will intrigue together, not against one another. I shall make sure of that. So don't dabble any more in politics, D'Artagnan. Leave it to your betters. Rochefort. Yes, Monseigneur. See this gentleman out. And do try to get on together better. I hope to be seeing more of Monsieur D'Artagnan. Off you go. Yes, yes Monseigneur. You've dogged my footsteps ever since I first saw you at Meung. I take it we shall meet again, monsieur. At a time and place of your choosing, monsieur. Good. Till then. Till then. Thank God you're back. We were beginning to worry. You needn't have. I seem to be in favour. He gave me this. A commission in the Musketeers. Oh, oh darn. Let's drink to it. I can't take it. Atos, you're the oldest and wisest. Here, just write in your name. Lieutenant Comte de la Fere. It sounds ridiculous. Besides, I drink too much. Keep it. You deserve it. Portos, then. You have it. You're the brawniest of us, if nothing else. I'm also bespoken, my dear chap. I just heard my um, duchess's husband has died. Not too soon, and the widow gets the fortune, so I shall get the widow and take up country pursuits. What about all for one and one for all, Portos? Up to a point. I'll invite you all to the wedding. Aramis, you're the learned one. You'll make a good staff officer one day. Here, take Lieutenant, it. Lieutenant, I've been telling you ever since we met that I'm going into the church. Exactly. And you never have. Well, now I am. That last episode finally sickened me of the worldly life. Here, give me the paper. Where's my pen? There. Lieutenant D'Artagnan. Enjoy good fortune when it comes, my lad. It doesn't stay long. Portos, stop hugging that bottle like a mistress and pour it round. Um, what? Empty? More wine? Grimaud? 
Bring another bottle before I take your skin off. <laughs> so we leave them. Portos became a rich country gentleman. Aramis disappeared into a monastery. Athos stayed a musketeer for a year or two, then left for who knows where. Lieutenant d'Artagnan had his duel with Rochefort, three duels, wounding him each time. The third time he helped him to his feet, shook his hand, and they decided to share a bottle. His servant Planchet was posted to a Picard regiment, survived many battles, and died of old age. And thus ends the most famous adventure of young d'Artagnan and the Three Musketeers. <laughs> In episode six of The Three Musketeers, Jamie Glover played D'Artagnan, Anton Lesser, Aramis, Timothy Spall, Portos, and Robert Glenister, Atos. Cardinal Richelieu, Julian Glover, Milady de Winter, Imelda Staunton, Buckingham, Michael Cochran, Madame Bonacieux, Helena Breck, Planchet, Dominic Letts, Grimaud, Tom Bevan, Queen of France, Teresa Gallagher, Lord de Winter, Gareth Armstrong, Felton, Lyndon Gregory, the Abbess, Francis Jeter, the Stranger, Stuart Organ, and Rochefort, Michael Onslow. The narrator was John Rowe. The Three Musketeers was dramatized by James Saunders and directed by Martin Jenkins. <laughs>